she comes. Cutting it fine, as usual. I can't understand what Baldwin sees in himself. She's only a kid. I couldn't see what he saw in Bet Lynch, either. Oh, come on, love, that were obvious. Come on, we better go in. Sorting out your love letters, are you, Mrs Howard? Just sorting out my reminders for final demands. The last time I had a love letter, it was written on the back of a ration book. A what? Oh, ask your boyfriend, love, he'll remember. It's uh, gone half past, you know. I won't be a minute. Well, did you? Always do, darling. Thanks for last night. My pleasure. Careful, watch it. It's nobody watching. They've all gone in. Come on. Hey! Guess where I just saw across the road? Would you believe Mike Baldwin in a passionate embrace with one of his employees? And I don't mean Hilda Ogden. Hey, lucky for him. Nice-looking girl. So-so. Was she? Yeah, she was attractive, yeah. And young. That's what they call enlightened industrial relations, love. Mm. Well, he'll enlighten a few more people if he carries on like that in broad daylight. We have got a milk jug, you know. Well, to me, it's a waste of time pouring it out the bottle into the jug and out of the jug into my cornflakes. It cuts out the middleman. I took on a job and half when I decided it civilised you, didn't I? Hey, I still have to let Ralph Lancaster know one way or the other today. Oh, will really? he? Of course I will. He wants a singer for tomorrow night, not Christmas. Oh, just one night, then. He's got somebody for the other two. It might be just one night now. Before you know where you are, it's a booking every night up and down the country. I didn't get married just to sit at home watching television while my wife's out. Warbling every night. I still say you're just jealous. Well, wouldn't you be if I was out every night of the week? With the girls looking at me, buying me drinks, looking at me figure. It wouldn't be every night. I'll just do this one charity gig. Let me talk to Ralph. Ralph. What did you say to him till the day? I said he'd wined and dined you for the first and last time. You don't mince words, do you? Please, Len. Just this one charity do. Okay. Just remember, you've got a loving husband who wants you home every night. As if I'd forget. As if you would. She's useless. I don't know why Matt Baldwin don't go all log and put Hilda Rogan in charge of your office. If she were half her age and twice the state love, he probably would. What about Elsa? She'll have to have another word with him. Last one didn't do much good. He's besotted, kid, he must be. She's puddled with him and all. Mm. I'll throw a bucket of cold water over a pair of them. Good morning, ladies. Now, don't let me interrupt you working. Oh, feel free. I mean, what's one more interruption among so many? I'll tell you what, my love. You can not working like you have been doing. You'll be carrying your bonus home in a wheelbarrow come Thursday. Is that a promise, Mr Baldwin? On me honour, darling. You don't think that you'll be entitled to a bonus, dear love? Why not a work you don't I? You're only a flaming learner and you're not doing very well at that. Well, we'll have to see what Mike says about that, will we? Oh, it's Mike again, is it? Yeah, it's Mike. I think I've had enough of her. That's just what I was thinking. Hold it right there. Beautiful. You just gave me fright in my life. I'm sorry, look. I couldn't resist it. Oh, Rita, you are looking marvellous. What a comeback this is going to be, eh? Uh, well, I haven't exactly come back yet, have I? I mean, that's why I've come to talk. Let me pour you a drink. It's a bit early for me. Vodka and wine, right? I don't suppose you do cups of tea, do you? <laughs> Honest, it is a bit early. I've got to get back to the shop. Well, I can't pour it back in the bottle, can I? Let's drink to tomorrow night, your big comeback. 
Aren't you excited? Terrified. And I wish you wouldn't keep calling it my big comeback. I've just told Len that tomorrow night will probably be my first and last appearance. After that, Rita Littlewood is dead. Long live Mrs. Furklow. Cheers. Oh, Rita, with your talent. Oh. oh all, all right, I'm not going to twist your arm. But just let me say this. The work's here if you want it. And not just at this place. There's Monty. Monte Carlo? No, Monty Fox. He runs the Blue Gardenia. He's looking for a regular singer. I said, what about Rita Littlewood? And he said, Rita? I said, yeah. I said, she's back working. He said, Ralph, tell her any time. I can't go working in Halifax. I didn't think you'd want to, love, otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned it. I want you working regularly, but here, not in Halifax. Len won't stand for it. They won't. Nuts to Len. Are you tired of living? Well, he don't scare me. Who? <laughs> well, not much. Hey, what about your accompanist? You know, sight readers are a bit thin on the ground these days. I could book one on spec, but you don't know, do you? Someone might turn up with a safety pin through his nose. Uh -huh. Well, I could ask Ernie Bishop. Hey, knockout. Tell him it's the usual rates, plus all the booze he can drink without falling off the piano stool. Well, I'll put it to him. Oh, no pies. Sorry, a little bit of all gone. I can do your pickle onion or bag of nuts. I've been thinking of a pie all day. It's on my mind. Hence the expression, pie face. Flip round to Jackson, will you? Get me a pie, chips and peas. I must hear it all in uh, ten minutes. Well, what about me? I'll get you that bottle. Why can't you go to Jackson's? Uh, a pint, Betty, please. Mine's ordered. I'm a light tail. So's mine. To take out the light tail. To take out. Yeah. Are you uh, are you going to the Gatsby tomorrow night? Isn't it? Hey, no, that's a funny question. I mean, when do I ever go to the Gatsby? Once in a blue moon, that's all. Why should I go tomorrow? Oh, Rita's singing. Should be a good night. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this bottle? Open it or what? I'm going round, love. I'm starving. I'll tell you what. You take me to the Gatsby tomorrow and I'll go to Chippy for you now. That's not a fair swap. All right, go on. Right, see you in ten minutes. Right. <laughs> what if I feel up? I am the rest. Right, come on, shut up. Well, cheers, Al. Cheers to half-day closing. Well, why is your half-day, isn't it? Oh, does hey. that mean you've got the rest of the afternoon off? No. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I'd have to take you for a drive or something. I've got a meeting at Policy and Resources Committee at this afternoon at Town Hall. Mm, sounds fascinating. Yeah, well, I won't say it was fascinating. It gets lively. So... No, it doesn't get lively. It, it gets heated. That's what it gets heated occasionally. Well, will it be late? Well, it depends how much we've got to do, love. Hey, we could maybe go on somewhere afterwards, but I don't know how long we're going to be. Well, I could wait outside. Yeah, we know wait if you like. I mean, press and public are allowed in, you know. I don't want you to be bored, though. Oh, yes, well, happen I will. Still, it'll be a new experience, you know, and I'm all for them, within reason. Yeah. Um, oh, there is one thing, though. If, if, you're, uh, if we, we rule exclusion of press and public, you'll have to leave again. I mean, it won't be for long. It's nothing personal. It's just if we're discussing out confidential. Well, I'm not better bring me knitting, just in case. Uh, well, I, I won't do any knitting, you know, in the meeting. Like, you might upset the uh, chairman. Oh, it's all right. I won't show you up. Don't worry. Oh, I've no worries about that, love. Here you are. Just write your names on the stub. Hello. What's for surprise? Fortnight in Hawaii? <laughs> I'm afraid the Hospital League of Friends don't run to the exotic with their raffle prizes. It's a food hamper or a garden umbrella. <laughs> I could use a food hamper. You know she's leaving me, Emily. Oh, dear. I am sorry. I'm so very sorry. Techno notice, love. He's having you on. Oh. <laughs> um, Emily? Yes? I'm, uh, I'm singing at the Gatsby tomorrow night. It's a charity do. And I was wondering if you and Ernie had anything planned. Well, uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, good. Because the thing is, I haven't got a pianist, and I was wondering if Ernie had obliged me. Oh, well, he's given up that kind of thing, you know, Rita. He hasn't played for months, apart from at home, of course. Well, would you ask him for me? Only, I always used to feel very relaxed when Ernie was there, and I know I'm going to be nervous tomorrow, and I would like to feel there was somebody backing me up on piano. Well, I'll mention it, but I should be prepared for the answer to be no. I, I really should. He does get terribly tired working all day. And there is the question of it being at the Gatsby. I doubt he'd feel comfortable there after uh, his last visit. When the cops nabbed him. Anyway, I'll call round later and see what he says, eh? Yes, all right. But I think you should start looking for someone else. I really should. Bye, then. Tadalo. Thanks very much, mate. What have I said? 
remind her of the time when Ernie nearly got done. She won't let him do it now, will she, even if he wants to? She didn't need reminding. Oh, she gets what me knows sometimes. Hmm. Shall I ring Ralph Lancaster and tell him he can't make it, then? No, you shan't. I shall be at the Gatsby tomorrow night if it kills me, just to spite you. And wipe that silly grin off your face. What grin? Are you and Ray going to this Gatsby Ray box? Well, I don't know. It depends whether or not we can get a babysitter. I wouldn't mind going, you know, give Rita a bit of moral support. Actually, we've got rather a soft spot for the Gatsby, because that's where me and Ray got together at first. You know, when he stuck up for me after that fight. Ah, uh, that real Yeah. Yeah, it'd be like a second animal, only in our case it'd be a second punch-up. <laughs> oh, I'll see you there, then. I just hope I meet a nice spell. Oh, an horrible one. I'm not that fussy these days. Well, you can see I'm going to have a keep an eye on you. Make sure you don't go raving mad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sam forgot me bottle. Oh, he right. said he was too hungry to remember it, and now he's too full to bust it to come and get it. Oh. Hey, Hilda. Did you hear your stance thinking of going down to Gatsby tomorrow night? I just thought I'd mention it, you know. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think it's very sad the way he always gabs off with her from 19 income and leaving you slaving at home. You do, do you? Yes, I do. Yes. Well, I'll tell you so much, should I? Put your mind at rest. If you're at the Gatsby tomorrow night and you still think her what walks in on Stan's arm is her from Inkerman Street, then you need glasses, Ray Langton. Badly. <laughs> Why have you gone quiet, Ray? Exit change. <laughs> Can I have a word? Well, we're just going for a dinner. I won't keep you. I'll see you over there then, Elsie. OK, Annie. Well, come on. I want to know, is management going to do all about this lot, or do we all get his bonus clubbed for the sake of boss of sex life? Oh, look, she's only a learner, Ivy. Them don't qualify. Oh, but you and me can see time coming when what she does turn out will qualify, can't we? Oh. No danger. Wait and see, Ivy. At least wait and see. Look, we're up to here with her, Elsie. Oh, it's a very tricky situation. I mean, she hasn't done anything that I can nail her for, and after all, he is the boss, you know. And you don't want to get involved, is that it? Well, I'll have a word with him. I don't Oh, mind. all right. What do you want him to do? We want him to give her a class, don't we? I mean, anybody turning rubbish out like that, they'd be down road. <sighs> Learn her or not, now, wouldn't they, eh? Yes, well, it's not as easy as that, love. They can go to a tribunal now for unfair dismissal. Unfair? All right, I'll have a word with her. Here she comes. I'll have a word with her later on, promise. Honest. Do you know if Mike's gone out yet, Mrs. Howard? He's still in my office, as far as I know. Oh, thanks. Well, I couldn't speak to her with him there, could I? Oh, come on, let's have a flaming drink. Well? 347, 8.5%. Well, well. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Now, do you mind if I get on with some work? It's all right, you know, they've all gone for dinner. Then who were you talking to just now? Only Elsie. Now, uh, look, love, in working hours, it's Mrs. Howard and I'm Mr. Baldwin, all right? It avoids unnecessary trouble. You don't like me dressed, do you? Yeah, I like it. Now, do you mind? These figures are important. I'm a senior tonight. Yeah. Where are we going? Well, you decide. Anywhere you like. I don't think I'm all that bothered where we go, really. Oh, now, come on, love. Don't make it difficult for me, eh? Wait, just a minute. Hey, you sure there's nobody out there? There's nobody watching. You're evil, do you know that? But lovely, with it? Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Hi, what did you say to Rita? I said you probably wouldn't want to. Emily, I do wish you'd let me decide things for myself. I'm quite capable of knowing my own mind, you know. I didn't want to commit you to something you might not want to do. Neither did I want to give Rita the impression that you're at her beck and call. I know what impression you did give Rita. You gave her the impression that I'm not allowed to decide things for myself. Well, if I did, I'm sorry. I certainly didn't mean to. Well, I was just so sure you wouldn't want to. It is that club, Ernest. You said you'd never work there again after what oh, happened last look, time. It's just a charity do, Emily. Anyway, I enjoy playing for Rita. I feel we've got a, a musical rapport between us. I really do. 
and I am flattered that she's asked me to play for her, and I shall play for her, if she hasn't booked somebody else. I see. I thought you wouldn't entertain it, but obviously she knows you better than I do. Nice lad, but very persuasive. You know, could sell crackers at Easter. <laughs> You're looking very smart, really. Thank you. I, I don't want to shame you, do I? I might jeopardise your career. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. <laughs> oh, I've uh, bought you a box of chocolates. Now, don't hand them out press box, because they'll scoff the lot. You don't have to buy me presents, mm, though. in love. Ain't we going to be late? Right. Whatever you like. One of them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Nice one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Only two bars intro. Oh, then you're in. Right, Go yeah, yeah, yeah. There you are. Nice to be back. Yeah. Didn't realise how much I'd missed it. <laughs> I know it's not exactly the talk of the town, but uh, it is showbiz, sort of. I know what you mean. I feel the same myself. It's better than making up wage packets at the factory, isn't it? Mm. Emily OK about it, was she? Yeah. Only well, I got the impression she didn't want you to do it. She were a bit, uh, you well, know... Well, let's just say she doesn't approve. Eh? Mm. But you can't get a seal of approval for everything you do, can you? No, you can't. I'm in the same boat, we Len. <laughs> let's hope we don't live to regret it. We won't. Come on, let's have another bash of this. Right. One. I should have saved those leftover dreams. Funny, cause here's that rainy day. Here's that rainy day they told me about. Hello, Rob. Marvellous. You haven't lost your touch since you've been away. Oh, neither of you. Oh, love, didn't know you were coming. Your wife is a knockout, Mr. Fairclough. A knockout. She's going to be marvellous tomorrow night. Oh. You reckon? Excuse me. I was just passing. Are you finished? Finished? We've only just started. Well, we can come back tomorrow lunchtime. No, no, we can't. We'll have to finish now. Look, if right. you can't wait, there's some chicken stew. It only needs warming through. How long are you going to be? I've just got to sort out one more number. All right. Uh, shall we try something even more sophisticated? Uh, Ella Fitzgerald? Oh, I don't know. We don't want to go over their heads, do we? Talking about sophistication, Stan and Hilda want tickets for tomorrow. Oh, well, more oh. the merrier. <laughs> Shirley Bassey number, then. Shirley, Shirley Bassey. Bassey. Great. Look, anything too sophisticated, forget it. That was the Rugby Supporters Club. They want a booking for two dozen. Do you know Eskimo Nell? Uh, no, but if you hum it to me, I will pick it up. Except it's not the sort of tune you hum, is it? Oh, for God's sake, put your face straight. It could be worse. They could be football supporters. Well, so long as I don't get the blame if the place looks like a tip when I've done. Nobody told me you was all working overtime. We only found out so tonight, Hilda. Oh, well, don't let me get in your way. Don't worry, love, we won't. I thought you might like to know, ladies, that these have all been returned rejected, below standard. What's number on them? Need you flaming ass. Number five. Who's number five? Me. Um, Say no more. They were all right, I'm certain they were. Well, for a learner. You stand to be oldest learner in the world. All so. right, Ivy, I'll handle this. And not before time. Look, it's not my fault. I've only done what she told me. Now, she can't teach me, right? Well, just a minute, you. I spent that much damn time showing you what to do. <laughs> I've told everything else a hundred times. And does she take it in? Does she help? Yeah, and we all know why, don't we? Yes, because she's got a mind on somewhere else, like the boss. Him that put her here in first place. One thing certain. None of you lot could get a fella like Mike, not in a million years. You know what you are, don't you? You're a lot of Better jealous... Better do, Terry. Now, come along with me. Where? I think we'd better see Mr Boring about this. He's still in my office. Suits me. He's 
uh, mixing business with pleasure, is he, Mr Baldwin? He's trained to, Hilda. He's trained to. Mm. Only we've had enough. Ten to one in take her side. Oh, they're all the same fellas. It's sex first, last and in the middle with them. Oh, get on with your charring, Hilda. Ah, you mark my words. They're shoddy from start to finish. The girls are fed up and I'm fed up with coping with a flack from them. Oh, let's face it, Mike, she can't do the job. She might be God's gift to the middle-aged businessman, but she can't handle a machine. All right, Elsie, you're all right. Come down to earth. I think you ought to come down to earth a bit, Mike. Look, I'm not going into the FSM books of it, but I'll tell you one thing. If she isn't out of that sewing room fast, damn fast, he won't be just Ivy and her mates that walk out. It'll be me and all. Well, what have you got to say? Well, I'm not all that bad, Mike. Really, I'm not. Well, it's them lot, isn't it? They've got it in for me. They're jealous of me because of you. I told you to keep quiet about that, didn't I? I didn't tell them. They must have guessed. Oh, I'm sorry, honest. I'll try and do better in future. I was thinking... You know, you said we could go anywhere tonight. Well, could we go to that place near Bowden, that Victorian restaurant I told you about? You know, the one with the os brasses and the little lamps all round the walls? Well, if it's nice, we can go down to the mill. Please, love. Got to get this business sorted out. I can't have all these disruptions. I've got a business to run. So what I propose to do is this, if, if you're agreeable. I <laughs> thought <laughs> we'd pack up doing that. And I wear me blue dress. The one with the flounce and the neckline all down here. Cherry on. Cherry on. Oh, Mike, don't I love you? Where is she now? Wouldn't you know? She's gone to powder her nose, and that's third time this morning. Oh, it's not good enough. You'd think after I'd given her a machine of her own, she'd at least make You're some... You're too right it's not good enough. But she's being kept going. She's not wanting for pieces her out, is oh, she? Oh, do me a favour, Elsie. She wouldn't get through a dozen a day. Oh, all right, Ivy. I thought Baldwin were going to have a word with her. That was idea, wasn't it, yesterday? Well, as far as I know, he has done. Oh, I see. And what did she do? Tittle his ear for him? Oh, maybe she's something slow in the uptake of summer, Tarvey. Look, Elsie, she's got him like that. You know what she's doing, don't you? Yes, she's looking through the mirror and dolling her soul up. She's Alice in bloody wonderland. No, she's writing a letter. She's doing what? I've seen her. She's writing a letter. A love letter. I'm telling you. Oh, so help me. It's pathetic, it is, isn't it? All known as you are. She tried to hide it behind you, what she were doing. Oh, you did, did you? So you've been slipping out and all, have you? I only, in my case, I'll get flaming sack, won't I? Look, Elsie, you'll have to have another word with his lordship, won't you? I've already told you I have done, I Oh, think. have you? Well, he wants telling again. Because we're on a bonus down here. And if our wages are down this week, you can tell him that all these machines are going to stop, so you can tell him that. And how many times is that this morning, madam? Oh... Uh, I've, I've got a complaint. Oh, have you? Well, I've got a complaint and all. No, I, I've got one of them complaints where you've got to keep going. Well, I can't help it. Oh, I see. Well, I'll see you at dinner time and we'll talk about your complaint. Well, I might be busy at dinner time. Well, if you are, it'll be the only time in the flaming day that you are busy. Now, listen, madam, I don't care whose little blue eyes you are. Would you either book your ideas up or you're out? Now, is that clear? Now, I'll see you at dinner time. In the meantime, I want to see that thing going up and down. Right? Needle's gone and broke now. Well, right now, Harry, I don't want to commit myself. Well, look, let me put it another way. I want to commit myself, but only if we can get the price right, all right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, look, why don't you let me come back to you tomorrow, eh? What's the day between friends? What? Well, of course we'll stay friends. Look, Harry, if there's a dollar in it for you and I make something out of it, we'll be friends. OK. Yeah, great, fine, tomorrow. Ah, just the man I'm looking for. I'll look these out for you, Mike. They're not quite Oh, well, that's confused. terrific. Fine. Now, how are you fixed for tonight? How do you mean? You may have to burn the midnight oil a bit. Harry Blumenthal. Ugh. Have you even fixed the price yet? I'm mm. up to here with work no, all I'm day. No, I'm sorry, so Mike. I can't tonight. Why not? I have a prior engagement. We don't have to let anyone down. Just be a bit late. The most important people always arrive late. 
But people are depending on me. I depend on you, Annie. What are you doing tonight? Playing the piano. Playing the piano? What, church social? No, I'm playing for Rita. Rita Fairclough at the Gatsby. Well, it's a nightclub, isn't it? Yeah. There's no problem, then. What time's the cab race spot? Well, a tennis, I suppose. Well, that's all right. Work here till late. You still have plenty of time. All right. Yeah, I suppose if I must, I must. All right, then talk about it later this well, afternoon. Yes, eh? OK, Mike, fine. Right. What's biting you? Same thing as was biting me yesterday and the day before that. I warned you, Mike. Oh, come on. What's wrong with this place? Haven't I got anything else better to do? Look, she's just a young girl who's trying to she's get She's just a done. young girl who can't do the job. Well, give her time. She'll learn. I think she realises... Look, that's not been my impression at all. She's a young girl who can't do the job and doesn't want to try. That's another thing altogether. And it's my experience that she doesn't feel that she is, is wanted of her. Oh, she probably seems like that because it's a bitchy to her out there. Well, if they are, you must have some idea why they are. Mike, it's not up to me to tell you about your private life. But you're going to, are you? Oh, all right, no. well, don't. No, no, I'm not paid to give you my opinion. I'm paid to give you the opinion of them girls out there. Them girls that sit behind the machines that bring the money in here. I don't pay to have opinions. I pay them to sew. I see. That's what you want me to tell you, is it? Oh, no, just a minute. Hang on. No. Of course I don't. No, they're right. They've got a case here working for a bonus, but... Oh, I don't know. Who'd have thought, eh? All the aggravation. Anybody in their right mind would have expected it. Look, I know they're just a lot of daft women to you, and they don't mind being treated like a daft w lot of women, but when you bring somebody new in and you treat her differently and she starts behaving like Queen Bee, then you've got aggravation. Oh, come on, she's not like that. She's just a kid. A bit scatterbrained, I know, but, well, she's young. Yes, yeah, she's very young, isn't she? Oh, come on, I'm not exactly geriatric, so don't give me that. I'm trying to give you what you pay me to give you, and that's to keep the machines going out there in that room. Oh, look, I'm, I'm treat, talking to you now like a supervisor and being a traitor to the working class, but what you want is them girls working until they almost drop dead. Well, you're not going to get that unless you've got, well, you've got your fancy piece in there. So, either she goes, or as I said yesterday, I go. No, you're right. Shall I send her in? No, uh... No, I'll have a chat with her at dinner time. Mike, you said that yesterday. Oh, come on, Elsie. Give me a break, will you? I know you think I'm a cynical pig. Nothing gets out of me. Nothing means anything to me. I can just pick them up and throw them down when I want to. Well, like all us cynics, Mrs. Howard, you could be wrong too, you know. It's not you were. Well? Oh, Rainy. Well, some of it was really very interesting. What were it again? Policy and Resources Committee. Oh, yeah, it sounds like a great day out. I know it sounds very funny, but honestly, they're at one another's throats. Some of it was fascinating. Oh, yeah, they'll be making a film of it next with uh, Sean Connery playing Lord Mayor. Who are they going to have as Alf, Paul Newman? I don't think it's as funny as all that. I mean, it's my race they're spending. Why shouldn't I go and listen? So then, what did you do that was so fantastic yesterday? Oh, I'm sorry, Rini. Well, when you said it at first, I mean, you must admit, my fella took me to Policy and Resources Committee. It is a bit of a conversation stopper. I've never described Alf as my fella. What are you being so prickly about? Give us a cauliflower. Well, don't go around calling Alf my fella. It's not as far as I'm aware. Oh, you're just good friends, I know. Is that beginning for you? Yeah, that'll do fine. Give us 15. Uh, <clears throat> I'll have a couple of onions and uh, have you got any lemons? Oh, and it's your friend coming. I've no lemons. I've got the juice in plastic ones. They're very handy, really. No, nah, all juice runs out when you cut a slice to put on your fish. Oh, I'm with Bosh. <laughs> Hello, Al. Morning. Hello, little fella. Girl. Our mother's always touchy about that. Babies don't mind, though. This one does, don't you, my sunshine? <laughs> what are you taking us tonight, then, Al? <laughs> eh? She's amused for some reason because I went to committee meeting with you. You ought to go to a few yourself, you know. It might open your eyes a bit. It all affects you, you know, one way or the other. Thanks, Alf. I can do without the lecture. Anyway, we're uh, living it up tonight, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Highways and byways, is it? Gatsby Club. Yeah, we're going to see Rita. I thought you'd be going yourself. Well, as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you, you could do a spot of babysitting for us. You might as well ask Lester Piggott if he's doing old Derby Week. The social Derby's cram full, isn't it? One long whirl, isn't it, Alf? <laughs> Why don't you ask one of the girls from Bowen? Oh, so very much. I'd sooner ask King Kong. Some of them are cannibals, you know that, don't you? Shell, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh,
She thinks that we've never heard of it. She thinks we're thick like she is. I crack on, I'm not listening. I'll tell you what place I used to work in, Rochdale, she wouldn't have lasted ten minutes. Oh, God, they the rough. <laughs> not like us, then, old lady like. You've no idea, Vera. I'll tell you, a girl there, she was made up to a supervisor. Oh, she was a bitch. Mind you, we settled her good and proper. What did you do? Do you want to know what we did? Yeah. <laughs> That's not ladylike. You're trying to get shut of me. Terry. Terry, I'm not trying to get shut of you. Yes, you are. It just doesn't work in there, does it, eh? You in the same room. If you've gone off me, all right. That's not the way you acted last night, though. I've not. Look, if you can just get it into your head. And I'm not going back to packing. Well, who said anything about going back to packing? Well, what have I done wrong? Look, Terry, will you trust me? Not if you don't love me anymore. I can't trust you, can I? You said you loved me last night, now you're trying to give me the sack. Look, all I'm saying is it'd be better off for me and you if, uh, well, if you would have worked somewhere else. You are trying to get rid of me. I oh, know, Terry. Weren't I any good? Terry. Is that it? Look, you're being very childish and very ridiculous. And I wrote your letter and all, saying how you made me feel, especially about last night. That's childish, isn't it? That's ridiculous, isn't it? Because you don't care. And I was going to give it to you now. I just feel cheap, ridiculous. Terry, look, will you listen to me? I'm... No, I won't. And I'm not getting a sack either, because it's unfair. And I can go to a tribunal. You know I can. Oh, no. Come on, Terry. No, Come. keep your hands off me. Well, what can I do? <laughs> Said in the joke, who's looking after the shop? Mavis is very capable, love. Aye. Are you having some tea before you go? I don't think I fancy anything. Tell the truth, I've got butterflies. You're a bit nervous, are you? Mm. I don't know why you go through with it at all, you know. You don't have to nowadays. You don't need to, do you? You mean the money? Yeah. No, I don't suppose I do need the money. But you know, Len, they've been tied when I would have done it for nought. In fact, I have, you know that. Mm. I'm like rest of people in that business. Daft, I suppose. Well, I don't mind, as long as you know the difference between Levin's Hume and Las Vegas. You've changed your tune. Did I have any choice? Fair Love and Langton. No, no, I mean... Oh, hello, Ernie. Yes, she is, yeah. Hey? Yeah, she's right here. Hang on. Is there any bishop for you? Hey, Ernie, you got me worried already. Oh, why tonight? Well, what time till? Hey, you're not going to let me down, are you? Oh, OK. I'll see you there, then. Try. Oh, that's ridiculous. He says he's got work overtime and he can't get out of it. Mike Baldwin's in a rotten mood or something. Probably because he didn't say pretty please. Well, where does that leave you? Oh, he'll be there. Only he'll have to go straight to a club. That means we can't have a run through. Oh, well, maybe it's for the best. Oh, he can be spineless. Why didn't he say something? Yes, but it's not as simple as that, Adley. Well, it's as simple as that as far as we're concerned. Look, she can't do a job. Look, if he's actress, she could go to a tribunal for unfair dismissal. Who says she will? She does. Oh, does she? Well, she's not entitled to go to no tribunal, is she? Hey, she is. She's been in that packing room long enough. I've checked. Well, she wouldn't have a snowball's chance. Mary, no, but she'd have a fine time with the publicity, wouldn't she? Will you be interested in her? That paper you take every morning. You know, along with photographs, I'm sure she'd pay for them. We could be right there. Yeah. 
And uh, he's made a damn fool of himself over it, and he knows it, but he doesn't want himself smeared all over the papers, does Oh, he? so we've got to stew, is that it? I'm afraid so. For the time being, we've just got to live with it. <sighs> I see. So in the meantime, let's keep them treadles going for the next half hour, shall we? Hey, I can't hear no machines going. Can you? Let's go. What is this? An epidemic of backsideitis or summit? We've decided. Once she eats at ten minutes, we'll have ten minutes. When she's up with up there with him with for half an hour, we'll have half an hour. And so far, we'll have five minutes. You do realise that you could all be out on the streets looking for jobs next week, don't you? Look, Elsie, uh, I think it'd be more constructive if I talked at girls, you know, just us girls, like. All right. Your shop steward. Where is she? She's setting her fag. Do you know where she'll be? Right, well, I'm telling you something now. He can't sack her. There's tribunals, there's all sorts. So he can't sack her, so she'll have to leave of her own accord, won't she? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I told you about Rochdale, didn't I? You did. Yes. <laughs> Come on, follow me. And you lot, keep them machines going. Okay. Yeah. Da 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 da. Amazing. And did you not find the tablets help then, love? Listen, if there's one thing I don't need to boost my confidence, it's any more of your devastating wits, or Cheryl. I am your greatest fan. I'll tell them after yourself. Him? Him? He's not even going. You're joking. Hey, and don't you persuade him. I want the audience to have a bit of enthusiasm. Know what I mean? Oh, come on, Lemmy. Oh, Welly, you've got to. She says I make her nervous. Oh, rubbish. Are you going? Well, of course I'm going. Why am I here now, do you think? I don't know. Why are you here? Ah, uh, well, you remember the old times, mate, when I used to come along and I'd say, Len, can you sub us a five? Of course, that was before I was a partner and things have changed. Yeah, it's a tenner now. Yeah, and the word is lend. You were a bum when I first met you. I wouldn't like for you to change your image. Now, that leaves me short. Well, at least there'll be two of us shouting for you tonight, our kid. You think short to go, don't you? Oh, aye, definitely. Will you? Gatsby! Oh, certainly. Are you coming with us? I'm stuck behind here, aren't I? She thinks it's a dead of iniquity. Well, it so happens we have a spare ticket. Oh, yes, we have, because Bet can't go. Yes, it's a charitable do, Betsy. It should be fairly innocuous. Hey, you don't know what charity, though, do you? Uh, I think it's something medical. I can't really remember. But it's all in a good cause. Yeah, well, I'm stuck behind here. Well, we can send a taxi for you. I mean, after closing time. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, trying to lead two women astray. Sure <laughs> enough. Am I leading you astray? Oh, I'd like to think somebody were. Start trying a bit after There's just one thing, though, Alf, I think I should tell you. And I'm being very honest with you now, but I think something might just come between us. What's that? That act. Don't you like it? You can't go to a nightclub in that like that. It's a very high quality. Yes, I'm sure it is, but it's awful. You look years younger without it. Hey, you come to mention it. That's why I started wearing it to make me look older. I was very chuddle faced as well. Oh, yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> ah, Stanley! Do you want the hat? You what? Do you want this hat? What are you giving it me for? It's coming between me and me personal life. Do you what? Do you want it or don't you? Come on, try to understand. Let's see how it looks like. Well, I was fancy myself on the block, eh, hey, you know? Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha! Well, it suits your chuck. Makes you look like a town councillor. Yeah, it does look a bit more imposing, doesn't it? <laughs> Looks to me like a chap that buys dead horses. I don't know why. I'd lose some of that As an act, it's daft. No charm, mate. Hey, Betty, can you find a good home for that? Yeah, smashing. I'll grow some of it. If it had an apple on it, you could put it on the floor. I'm going to ruin this young generation. Terry. Now, Terry, look, just why are you yelling at me? No, I don't know. I don't know anything. Look, what are you talking about? Look, I can't talk to you now. Look, will you stop yelling at me? Now, just stop it. Look, look let me p meet you somewhere and I'll... Uh, Terry. Why do women get in states like that, eh? Now she said she's not coming back. She wants a week's money in lieu of notice. A week's money. She said she was utterly humiliated. Now, what did I say? Come on, tell me. What did tell me? Yeah, you know, Mike. Oh, yeah, all right, then. All right, we'll wrap it up tomorrow. See you in the morning, then. Yeah, good night, mate. He's not there. 
Perhaps he's on his way. Overtime. I told you you should have had a professional. No, I'm one of you, P. Here we are. Your very old fan club. Yes, and you'd better be good, lady. Good God, I didn't expect half a street. No, I, actually, I did half drag me here. Oh. <laughs> Another one dragged by his heels, I suppose. And who got lumbered for the taxi fare? Oh, join the club. They brought the entire street bar Ernie. Go on, then. Put us down for five tickets. Oh, I thought there'd been more in tonight. Then a lot have gone down to the Gatsby. <laughs> I know all about the Gatsby. <laughs> what am I supporting? Weatherfield Hospital League of Friends. Oh, well, Emily. better a friend than a customer. I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, Ernest, you should be down at your night. Yeah, I know I should, but I've been looking all over the house for the music. Where is it? Well, Why couldn't you leave it on top of the piano where it was? I touched your music. Well, where is it? She came round Ooh. and took it. Rita did. She's already got it down I wish somebody there. would tell me. Betty, can I use your telephone? Yes, love it. And could you pass me the... Um, the directory. The directory, yes. Ernest. What? Calm hey, down, well, don't please. Don't feel calm. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh, well, God, mate, I'm sorry. Oh, let me see, let me see. Oh, ah, I'm oh, sorry, my God. sorry. Does it hurt very much? Is honestly, mate, I'm, broken? Honestly, oh, mate, I'm sorry. Know. Oh, come on, love, let me bathe. Right. There's something Would you ring the Gatsby and... Oh, well, look, get oh, off home. On. Honestly, mate, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Should be a safety catch on them, you know. So, if there is anyone here who can read a few dots, I'm sure Miss Littlewood will be very glad to hear from you. Thank you. Hey! Hey! Oh, Ernie, I wonder what's that? Ah, well, you know, Ernie, you wouldn't want to let it spoil your evening. Oh, you are artless, you. Look, to get the strippers on. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I was only kidding when I said they had strippers. Oh, got no can anybody here play the piano? <laughs> I can play Beautiful Dreamy with one finger. And I can play the mouth organ. That's if I had a mouth organ. She's got to have an accompanist, doesn't she? I mean, she'll go spur. Good old thing. <laughs> Twin of the keyboard is our friend. Never let you down. <laughs> what does Faye? Who's there? Faye? 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 Rita, come on! You've got an accompanist. Are you trying to make a fool of me? She says she can play. Can you play any of my numbers? I can play so you'll be coming round the mountain, love. Oh. Thanks, sir. I don't know, you see. I can't understand why. Can't you? Can you? I'll tell you something. The girl's fixed it. Fixed it? How? You're better off not asking. But I am asking. All right, I'll tell you. They did enough, or said enough, to get their message across to her, and if I were you, I'd leave it at that. You see, you must have thought it was your sewing room. Obviously, you did. But it's not, you see. It's their sewing room, and their rules apply. <clears throat> so, if I was to ask you to find I'm out... I'm very glad I'm not on their blacklist. At least, I hope I'm not. I just come, love. Oh, like hell he was. Trouble, trouble, thing. Oh, let's move on. It's a watch, isn't it? Like a lovely couple, don't they? Well, she does. No, oh, go on. They're well suited. Ah, they are. They are. Hey, where is this uh, lucky chap going to come and snap you up, anyway? Go on, say this. If this fellow at White Charge doesn't arrive soon, I'm likely to come in with a prior bid. And what makes you think I'll have you? Well, you wouldn't know, would you? You would. You don't know until you ask. Well, I'm here. I've got a lovely house. I've got lovely policies. And one day I will have a very good pension. How about it? You're on. But I've only just unlocked the doors. Give us a pint, will you, Betty Love? Like that, that is it. Did you enjoy yourself last night at the Gatsby? Oh, yeah, fine. Good. <laughs> Give us a pint, Love. <gasps> oh, you're so 
service then? Just about. You should have waken me. I'm late for work. Yeah, I tried to about half a dozen times. Oh, I'm surprised you're so bright and breezy this morning. What time did you get home last night? About midnight. And the rest. Well? Well, what? How did it go? Oh, so so. Come on, give. Oh, nothing happened really, except half proposed. He did what? Oh, asked me to marry him, I think. You only think? Well, I know what happened. It's whether I should give it a first thought, let alone a second. Hell's flaming bell. She gets a proposal of marriage. It was of marriage. <laughs> and she doesn't even know whether to give it a second thought or not. Well, it wasn't said serious, clown. Well, how was it said, then? Well, it just said, well, I marry him, sort of as a joke. I see. And what did you say as a joke? Yeah, well, that's just it. I'm not altogether sure. I think I laughed it off, I think. Were you stoned out your tiny mind or what? Was I, Eck? I was just a bit merry, that's all. So Alf jokingly asked you to marry him, and you jokingly said no tie, you think? That's right. But supposing, just supposing Alf didn't say it as a joke, and supposing you didn't say no, you oh, said... Oh, bet, for goodness sake, it's bad enough as it is. But it is possible. Yes, it's possible. I mean, him being the sort of chap he is, having had a few drinks and treating it like a joke might be the only way to be brave enough. Oh, I wish you'd get to work. I mean, what do I say when I see him? How do I treat him? Like a bloke who's just asked you to marry him. Oh, well, if you're going to be funny. Oh, come on, cock. What's so wrong with the idea? He's got a good job. He's not a boozer, not habitual anyway. I doubt he'd turn out to be a wife basher. He's not got two heads. And furthermore, here's a point that's definitely in his favour. He's a fella. I agree he's Alf Roberts, but he's still a fella. Do you not treat anything serious? Reen, I'm serious. Here he is. Who life becomes you, it goes with your Oi, 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 oi. Elder, 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 elder. Put a sock in it till you get home, lovely. Yeah, yeah. That's not what they said last night. Couldn't get enough of me at the Gatsby last night. Unlike some I could mention. So you've said, love it. Once every minute since you came in at half past eight. I'm a polar, that old black magic. Oh, I did the lot. She was my kind of piano player, were Faye. Faye? Mm. Yeah, she, she stood in for Ernie Bishop on the piano, you know. I wonder how Ernie Bishop's hand is this morning. Oh, no idea. I reckon he was very lucky not to break something, you know. You know, Faye had this knack of getting everybody going, like. Mm. Well, everybody, that is, except Rita Fairclough. She hardly got a look in. Hey, come on, Hilda. That's not fair. That's not true. All right, you come on. How many songs did she sing? Well, not that many. Ah, three at the most. Oh, no, it was me and Faye what held that stage last night. They lapped us up. Must have been blind drunk. Pardon? Nothing, love. Mm. Annie Road, you enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Councillor? Eh? Hey? From what I could see. And everybody else and all, I shouldn't wonder. I don't know what you're talking about. What were you doing, Alf, that was so, uh, fascinating? No, it's honest. He were doing a bit of courting, that's uh, all. Rubbish. Canoodling, then? Well, I wouldn't call it that. What would you call it? Well, I wouldn't call it canoodling any more than I'd call what you were doing, singing. Seems to me a lot of you made fools of yourself last night one way or the other. Look, I didn't make a fool of myself. It was just to... What? Oh, no. Right, I'm off. Ah, I'm a canoodling at your age, Look, Al. for the last time, I was not canoodling. What were you doing with Rene Bradshaw, then? Well, actually, I'm not quite sure. Huh? Well, I don't call that sort of life glamorous. You don't call nothing glamorous. Yes, you? I do, but nothing we do. What is remotely glamorous about our life? Go on, be honest. Did you have a foul time or something at Gatsby last night? No. We well, were in a foul temper this morning. And I'm not, because my life's pretty good at the moment. Robin, he's only a clerk. Anybody would think he were James Hunt? Oh, yes, but a clerk with hidden depths. Yeah, well, I met a fella last night. Oh, yeah. I did, honest. Well, go on, then. What's he do? Has he got a car and is he as good-looking as Robin? I don't have to measure all the fellas in my life against yours. I happen to have my own preferences. Oh, all right, don't get in a huff. I'm interested, honestly. I mean, it's a long time since you had a fella. While you've got two, ta for reminding me. Two? Robin and Steve. Oh, I don't count Steve. He's more like a pet dog than a fella. I'm sure he'd be delighted to hear that. Ah, well, don't you go tell him, otherwise you'll be littler than you are. I won't, but to save his face, not yours. All right, look, cool it, Potter. I'll make you a nice cup of coffee, soothe you down. Night's out.
I do not agree with you, definitely. And besides, you're getting on me wick. Well, come on, then. What's his name? What does he do? His name's Barry. I don't know what his job is. He plays a lot of rugby. Hey, go away. They're dead big and athletic, them rugby players. Hey, does he look like Tony Neary? A bit. Only a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, if you're having it at all... Oh, come in, sit down, have a cup of tea. I prefer your company to his. She's still smarting. I heard that. I am not. Hey, how about you, then? What do you mean? Well, you've cracked it, haven't you? I don't follow you. That's his coarse way of saying you seem to be doing all right with mm. Rene. Ah, oh, you noticed. Well, he did spend half the night with your nose in her lug hole, didn't you? Hey, look, I, I didn't say anything, though, did I? You know, later on. Like what? Well, you won't let this go any further, will you? What? Only I proposed to her. To Rene? Yeah. What did she say? Yes. Well, congratulations. Oh, hey, that's just great. A little no, it's great. I mean, it's not as straightforward as that, is it? Well, she's single, isn't she? Of course she is. Well, she's a woman, isn't she? Yes. Well, what's your problem? Well, I'm not sure she meant it. You know, meant yes. I mean, supposing she thought that I was kidding. And were you? Well, I've had a bit to drink on her. And now you're sober. Would you ask her again? Alf? Well, I don't know. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know. But but supposing... She didn't know you were joking. She thought you were serious. Yeah. Well, you could have done a lot worse. What's wrong with Rini? I think you've landed on your feet. She's right, you know. Mm. I mean, Rini's OK. She's pleasant, presentable, attractive, capable. Kind to children and dumb animals, so she shouldn't treat even husband too badly. And she's got her own business. Mm. You're pulling my leg, aren't you, pair of you? No. No. Hey, you know, she's very nice, isn't she, Rini? When I said Mrs. Sharp was a baby, so why you treated you after lunch, I didn't mean this. Ah, you'd rather we'd have brought butties and had them on a park bench. Well, you should have mentioned it. Some wives get taken out, you know. Yeah. But not by their husbands. Who by them? Other people. Oh. Hey, now that's cynical, that is. I am cynical, Betty, but I'm lovely with it. Oh, that's not an argument. Now, what does the blushing bride want? Here comes the bride. Give over. Give us a tomato juice. <laughs> hey! What's all this about a bride? Oh, it's just a private joke, Betty. Yes, I noticed you and Alf Roberts were very cosy mm. last night. Everybody noticed. Uh, yes, well, last night was last night, and today's another day. Mm. He didn't, did he? Didn't what? Well, I come across him in the lobby, and he was grinning that stupid fat grin of his, and he was humming anchors away. So I says to him, listen, mate, I says, you want to get your feet <coughs> under the table there proper, mate? Get a wed, I says. And he gives me this big wink before he staggers out trying to light a wood <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, It's true, every word. Thank you, friend. Well, at least you know now he'd been thinking of proposing. It didn't just come out on the spur of the moment. Oh, I've changed my mind. Put a vodka in that. Morning, ladies. Excuse me. Do you live around here? Uh, ah, sort of. Do you know where Mrs. Howard lives? I had the number. I've lost it. Uh, yeah, number 11. Just there. Oh, thanks. Turn off, Tom. Oh, Mrs. Howard. That's right. Uh, I'm Bob Birchall. Susie's dad. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm afraid Susie's not in at the moment. She's at work. Oh. I thought she usually come on for a dinner. Well, she usually does, but not today. I think she's eating with one of her boyfriends. You know what these kids are. Uh, well, is there any message or anything? Well, as a matter of fact, I've got some bad news for her. Oh? It's her mother. What? She's left me. She's left home. I think you'd better come in. Thanks. <laughs> There you are. That'll make you feel a bit better. Have you had any dinner? Because if you haven't got oh, a meat no. pie in the oven... It's all right, Mrs. Howard, really, thanks. All right, Susie's always saying how generous you are. Aye, when she's not saying what a dragon I am. Oh, no, she never said that. Well, not very often, anyway. Well, I... I don't know what to say uh, about this, uh... No, it's none of your business, Mrs. Howard, really. 
I mean that in the nicest possible way, of course. Yes, well, Susie's practically one of the family now, and... I've been meaning to write to thank you for, uh, for giving Susie such a good home, but... Well, I didn't really have much option. She sort of, uh, installed herself. It's not very backward coming forward, is she, Susie? Nobody knows that better than me. Give her an inch, you Oh, know. no, no, she doesn't get away with much here. In fact, we've all settled down together very nicely. She works for you and all, doesn't she? No, no, not for me. For Mike Baldwin, who runs the factory where I work, and the shop where Susie and Gail work. Uh, Gail's my other lodger. It sounds very nice home from home, in fact. Well, not my home now. Do you think Susie will be very upset about this, about her mother leaving? I don't know. And they were very close, her and her mother. Look, uh, tell me if you think I'm poking my nose in, but what happened? Well, I got home from work last night and she'd gone. Which she threatened to do before on occasion, but I never thought she would. Uh, as a woman's stock in trade, that is natural warfare, threatening to leave. Very few of them do. Ah, well, Margaret did. After 21 years of marriage. That's what I can't credit. Just upped and went. Not a word of explanation. I mean, I'm not the best husband in the world, I'll admit that, but, uh, well, I'm not the worst. I don't think I am, anyway. I'm sure you weren't. D do you think she'd come back? Uh, now that she's had time to think? Unless, of course, there was... What? Difficult to say, isn't it? Do you suppose there's another fella? I don't think so. But you don't know, do you? No. Oh, you don't. I mean, she's packed all her clothes, everything. And if you ask me, she's gone for good. I mean, you and her mother are very reckless. And you think Susie will be very upset? She thought the world of her mother. She did the world. I don't expect we'll be seeing Rita in here today. She'll be busy licking her wounds. I never thought she were all she's cracked up to be, you know. Only gets away with it because of the way she gets herself up. And half of that's makeup. Where are Silda here? Star waiting to be born. Oh, look, I've told you, I know my limitations. But like I say, you don't have to be a chicken to lay an egg. You do, actually, Hilda. Huh? Oh, well, somewhat like that. Hello, lovely. Hello. Uh, can I have a lemonade shandy? Oh, yes. oh, isn't he sweet? Couldn't you just have him on a butty? Well, I do drink bitter normally. Of course you do, love. But not whilst I'm working, you know. Oh, stop teasing him. I mean, he's quite right. There's nothing to be proud of in drinking, you know. I mean, the youngsters these days, they think they've got to drink, smoke, and do other things just to prove that they're grown up. What sort of other things? You see, then? my point is that they prove they're more grown up by not smoking and drinking and doing other things. Discipline never hurt anybody. And a little bit wouldn't have done you any harm either. I've had them queuing up to smack my bottom, Betty. Oh, is she off? He wouldn't have me any other way, would you, love? Well, then. Uh... Uh, Luke, he's blushing. It's incredible. 1977 and somebody can still blush. I used to blush a lot. Come again, Hilda. I said I used to blush a lot. When you were seen out with your Stan, you mean? Oh, he was a very good-looking young fellow, was Stan. When did he have his accident? When did you? Hey, now keep it polite, you two. Where's my missus? She left a couple of minutes ago. She went with Reenie Bradshaw, said she got to pick a few things up from the corner shop. Uh, you've, yeah, you've been in there a long time, haven't you? What have you been doing, writing rude words on what? Reading them. There's a first election in there at the moment. <laughs> Hey, if it is you what's writing them, Ray Langton, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I have to scrub them off every time. Not lately, you've not. No, well, tomorrow. Ah, well, I don't see the sense in it myself. Writing on walls, it's pointless vandalism. Pity a few more don't think like you, love it. Oh, honest, I went to Chester a few weeks back. You know, we went for a walk along the walls. Have you ever been? No. Well, they go right the way round the city. They've been stood there since Roman times. I mean, they're really summer. And these yobs have done punk rock slogans and football slogans. Heaven knows what else. I mean, sprayed them on with those aerosol cans. Scratched them in the walls with their knives. Of course, they've stood there for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, it makes you sick. It does, that. They want spraying themselves from head to foot with something very painful. Yeah, yeah you see, Hilda, you want to be thankful you've only got the lavish and eat the clean. Could be the old flipping Roman war. Life's never as bad as it might be, Hilda. Hmm. You want to have mine? Um, 
Oh, I'll have a tin of curry powder and all. I think I'll give him curry for his tea at Mecca Change. Oh, I don't know. You can think of curry. Why, what's up? So I've got a right strong stomach me now. It puts me off my grub. Why, well, he didn't have that much to drink last oh, night, did he? Oh, enough. And I mixed it. Oh, fatal. <laughs> Still, it were a good do. Hey, Alf didn't pop the question last night, did he? No, did he, Eck? Whatever made you think he did? Well, you got pretty shirty when Ray started going on about it at Rovers. I know, but Ray was making all that up, wasn't it? Telling Alf he should... Where, well, dear? Well, three pounds nine to love, please. Well, he mentioned it to me. Oh. He did pop the question, didn't he? Look, I'm saying no. Anyway, it's none of your flipping business. What did he come round for this morning? Name the day. Don't be ridiculous. I haven't seen him today. Oh, come off it. So I'm called past my window at half past twelve. I tell you, I haven't seen him today. I think you've got him locked up. It might chance as he changes his mind. Still, I don't blame you. You're not getting any younger, are you? And neither's he. I think you'll make a lovely couple. In fact, you'd spoil another pair. <gasps> Thanks very much. Sure are. Give my love to Al. You have no difficulty taking in the waist. What you want to do is take off the little belt loops at the side and take a dart on them. That way, nobody will see it. I always have to do it with my jeans. I have terrible difficulty getting jeans to fit me. What with having such a little waist? You're boasting again. I have got a little waist. Mm, a little head to go with it. Sure right, I'm off now to meet Robin. How do I look? Ravishing? No different to what you usually look. Mm, ravishing. I've told you what, these urgent. Yeah, we do. Tens and twelves, are oh, I think so. Hey, uh, you look very nice, Susie. Oh, thank you, Steve. I feel a bit of a scruff, really. Am I not much time at dinner? No, time? no. You, you, you look very nice. You always do. Is it um, your dinner hour? Well, you yes, because I'm just going to... thought I timed it just right. I've had ten minutes of me break, but I've got 40 minutes left. I had a quick drink at the Rovers, yes. but do you, you fancy... See, the thing yeah. is, love, I, I've made another appointment. But you can walk me down to the electricity showrooms if you like. Electricity showrooms? That's where an appointment works. Steve knows I've got a very wide selection of gentlemen friends, don't you, Steve? Oh, yeah, you do seem to have, yeah. It's not all that wide, actually. Mm. Come on, if you're coming. Hey, you can link arms if you like, down Rosamond Street. I mean, Robin's very broad-minded. Ta-ra, Gail. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Oh, Luke, never mind. Barry, um, what's his name, might pop in, if he's not in a scrum somewhere. Missed. Yes, I'm looking for Susie, Susie Birchall. Oh, you've just missed her. She's gone for a dinner. Oh, dear, it's not my lucky day, is it? Hmm? Oh, I'm uh, Susie's dad, oh, Bob Birchall. hello. Well, do you, uh, do you know where she's uh, gone? No, not really. Oh, well, how long she'll be? An hour. Depends. And the boyfriend? Yeah. Look, I uh, couldn't wait, could I? Yeah. yeah. Come to the office if you like. Thanks. How is she, anyway? Oh, on top of the world. You know Susie. Nothing gets her down. I told her it wasn't such a bad idea. They were serious. I can see them two really making a go of it. You did? I did. Why, don't you reckon it? I do. Lend us. We've both told Alf the same. Well, you know what they say about great minds. How did Alf respond? Very favourably. Rini's blowing out and cold, actually. She can't quite see her and Alf somehow. She's hoping it were all a joke. Well, she'll have to be encouraged to blow just hot, won't she? For her own sake. Oh, I agree. Well, then. Well, it's none of our business. I mean, it is their lives. He's never stopped you before. True. What are you pair whispering about? You're up to no good, I'll be bound. You know, Betty, you've got this terrible habit of poking your nose into other people's affairs. I should watch it. Be like that, then. You'll never go to heaven, you know. I know. I just don't know what to say, Mr. Birchall. That's hard to credit, isn't it? For 21 years. 21 years. Just to leave you without a word. I suspect she was upset. Oh, she must have been upset. So you're completely on your own now, then? Yep. Afraid I am. But I'll cope. Mind you, I'm not, not much use around the house. I used to offer to help Margaret sometimes, but, uh, well, she's one of these very house-proud women. It's like she was all, all herself, mm. you know. I don't believe in that. 
I think husbands and wives should share the work 50-50. Well, so do I, Gail. I mean, I used to, uh, I used to beg Margaret to let me make a meal sometimes, you know, anything. But no. Now I can just about make a plate of chips. I'd have to buy myself a cookie book, won't I? Or starve. Well, you can come and eat with us sometimes. I'm sure Elsie won't mind. She seems a very nice person, doesn't she, Mrs. Allen? Yes, yeah, she is, if you're on the right side of her. She'll try to be harder to do that with Margaret, shouldn't I? I just don't know how she could do it. I mean, I could understand if you... Well, if you were some kind of a monster like some husbands are. Well, maybe she thinks I am. So you have to live with people, don't they? You're no monster, Mr. Birchall. No way. Well, I'd like to think I wasn't, Gail. He's only me back from another conquest. Hey, I had a fact. Hello, hmm. What do you want? Hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, love, I've got some bad news for you. Oh, yeah? Well, it's. Look, uh... Uh, I'm sure you'd prefer to be in private. Stop your girl. I've got no private to discuss with him. You were saying, Dad. Well, it's your mother. What about my mother? She's gone. She's left me. Well, good for her. She should have done that years since. There we are, love. All nice and fresh. And I've put two cream slices in, just like you said. I could have sent her Marion, but I felt like a breath of air. When you've been in house all day, you sometimes feel as if you could scream, don't you? <laughs> Is that it, then, love? Uh, we have some jam donuts, if you like. I'd better not. If I do, I'll only eat them. I don't know you resist temptation with this lot in shop all day. We don't, love. It doesn't show. Oh, there's the odd bulge here and there, but that's the secret between me and Scales. <laughs> <laughs> Look after yourself, love. Ta-da. Ta-da, love. She's a nice woman, isn't she? Do you know, I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody. Alf called, has he? No, he hasn't. He's not? No. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? I've been getting myself in a stew about nothing at all. He can't even remember proposing. Otherwise, it'd have been down the street, wouldn't he, with a bunch of flowers for me. Of course, he has been in the street, because Deirdre's saw him. Oh, no, he's blissfully unaware of anything he said to me last night. He's not, you know. Oh? He's told Rita and Len that he's proposed, and you've accepted. He's never. He did. And they both thoroughly approve. They think it's a cracking idea, and so do I. Well, why hasn't he been down here, then, to see me? His fiancé? He's probably been too busy. Working? No, love. Bind ring. And a good thing, too. I'll just go and put kettle on. And where do you think you're going? Well, I could say home, but I'd be telling you a lie. I'm going out for a little drinky and before you ask any more questions, with Robin. Very nice. I suppose you know what time it is. Um, yes, it's 20 past five. And we're not supposed to close till half past. Supposing there's a sudden rush of customers, what am I supposed to do? Well, I'd phone the police if I were you, because I've just locked up. They're bound to have broken in. It doesn't bother you that we're not supposed to close for another ten minutes? And does it bother you you're getting just like my Auntie Doris? And if you knew my Auntie Doris, you'd know that's the worst insult I can pay you. She's I the don't one... don't care. Don't interrupt when I'm talking to you. She's the one who wouldn't take me to Victoria Park because of the mermaid statue, and you are growing just like All her. All right. If she tells you to do the job you're paid to do, then yes, I am like her. And what's more, I don't mind being like her. Carry on, another five minutes, you'll have an app to talk about. I just don't know how you can. Can what? Go out drinking as if nothing's happened. We could go on like this all night, couldn't we? What has happened? Susie, your mum's run away from home. Gail, I know when I will say it again. You should have done it years ago. They've been together for They've 20... They've never been to... Look, if it makes you feel any better, yes, I'm upset. And yes, I'm worried. Worried sick, but about my mother, not about him. I've not got a second to worry about him. How's your love life? Uh, what are you doing standing there with your mouth open? Catching flies, are you? Or do you I'm want to say something? I'm waiting to see what happens to her. Because I heard last one that I that ended up in Thurwell with mm. a pair of concrete boots. <laughs> Yeah, you've been here in the you two, haven't you, lately? Well, there's a lot being said, you. Yes, I believe. That's why I was waiting for you to show your face. Yes, well, I just think I'll browse around the vegetables. Yes, I'll come and serve you. You're a rotten devil, you. Mm, I'm known for it. Uh, why don't you pop in for a cup of coffee after? Good idea, I will. Ta-ra. See you. Mm -hmm. I believe you were there when certain statements were made. Unlike Bet, of course, who got it from his second cousin's window cleaner. Statements made by Alf. Mm, statements made by Alf. Well, I 
after certain advantages were pointed out to him, he did admit to being on serious side. Oh, yes, and what advantages were these, exactly? Ooh, younger woman, marrying into a business, not exactly Tesco's, but a business. Mm, no prizes for guessing who pointed that out to him. Take your pick. You and Len. Got a top at class and kiss teacher. Hey, I love it. So hot. Oh, it's marvellous, isn't it? All the years I've owned it, and I never know from one day to the next whether it's going to work or not. I could be wrong, Gilda, but I don't think he'd like you calling him, innit? Who? Huh. Oh. Your Stan. Yeah, talking about your Stan. Never knowing from one day to the next whether he's going to work or not. I'm talking about me oven, what's burnt me husband's tea. Oh, your oven? Yeah, me oven. Well, do you wonder, Hilda? I mean, it is an antique, that oven of yours. True. But if it were good enough for King Alfred's rock buns, it's good enough for their Stan's beef burgers. Look, we can't all go buying new stoves every five minutes, you know. We don't all get us money that easy. Some of us have to work very hard for a pittance. Mm. Have you put sauce on these pies? Not if you take them out, only if you eat them in here. Well, what's the odds? Same price, aren't they? Do you want sauce, Hilda? Yeah. Then you shall have sauce. Betty, give us some sauce. Right. Well, I attend to this young lad. Although I rather suspect he's underage. As I live and breathe, it's young Master Roberts. <sighs> do you only get paid for cracking gags or do you pull beer and all? Ask me nicely. I'll do a tap dance on counter. <laughs> Don't think I couldn't when I was Shirley Temple's age or a little knockout. How am I supposed to get sauce on these things? Oh, look, just fill the taps up and I'll carry them carefully. Yeah. Hey, are you saying age is Shirley Temple? I didn't say that, Hilda. I said when I were age, when she were in her prime, she were 20 years before me. Oh, get off. Queen Victoria weren't 20 years before you. Oh. Don't give her any sauce, Betty. She's got enough. <laughs> Have you done any shopping today, Al? No. E, I'm surprised to hear that. You know, there's a little shop not a thousand miles away from here where you get very good service. In fact, the lady's waiting by the door for your custom. Not to mention a diamond solitaire. You know, when it comes to fairy tales, Hans Anderson had note on you lot, had he? Is that what it is, Alf, a fairy tale? I'm saying note. Do you hear that, Hilda? They're all alike. Prince Charles, Anassis, Alf Roberts. Put them together, you can't tell one from another. Eve off. What did Anassis say to the reporters when they asked him if he was going to marry Jackie Kennedy? No comment. What do we get out of Alf? I'll show you, shall I? Tell me, Mr. Roberts, is it true that you are contemplating marriage to a Miss Reenie Bradshaw of this parish? Look, I've told you once, I am saying note, and that's the end of it. Well, what's that, Hilda, if it's not Lancashire for no comment? Hey, is that right? Are you getting married? Oh, shut up, the lot of you. Look, one of these days you're going to fall in that mouth of yours and drown yourself. You see, Hilda, you can't have a bit of fun anymore. <laughs> you mark my words, you'll laugh about this, Al. Look, just let it drop. Listen to the gypsy's warning, oh, yeah. Al. I'm telling you, I can see you now sitting in your front room, chuckling to yourself, and Reenie shouting downstairs, I'm ready. And you standing up, brushing the confetti off your shoulders, and thinking to yourself, how did that lot ever reckon I was going to get married? Go on, Hilda, give us a clap. Well, are they going to get married or aren't they? Honest, Mr Birch, if she did here, I'd tell you. She left about 5.30 and didn't say what time she'd be back. Have you, um, heard from Mrs. Birchall yet? Yes, it must be. I wish I could help. Look, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Could I have your number? Yeah. Look, I'll have to go. I will ring you. OK, bye-bye. Hiya. I saw the light were on, so I thought I'd see you were mad keen to work late. I've just been detained, that's all. It's, uh, Susie here. It's, uh, Susie here. Steve, have you got a minute? Yeah. Look, I don't want you to think I'm trying to put you off Susie or anything, but... I could do with a bit of help. Well, she's all right, isn't she? Oh, she's fine. Well, what is it? Have you got a mum and dad? You have, haven't you? Yeah. What would you do if your mum suddenly just left home? <laughs> what if your mum, for no reason at all, just walked out on your dad? What would you do? Well, she wouldn't. Yeah, but suppose she did. OK, I, I don't know what this is all about. It's what's happened to Susie. Her mum's left home. Oh, hey, that's terrible. Poor Susie. Poor Susie, nothing. She just don't care. She's just not bothered. I can't believe that about Susie. Well, you're better, cos it was true. I was here when her father came round. She said her mother should have left him years ago. He's a nice man, Steve. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, but... 
You still don't believe me, do you? No, it, it's not a question of whether I believe you or not. It's... Well, there must be some explanation. Of course there's an explanation. But what is it? You see that freckle? That's the way we look, man. You know what he's thinking to himself now? He's thinking, what have I done? What have I done? Leave it. All right, Alf. He can take a joke, him, you know. I think he should marry Rainey, and he knows it and all. <clears throat> joke, you know, and everybody's having a go at you. I mean, this one here had a go at him before you come in. Poor devil, don't know what day it is. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Listen to me, clever, and it might be funny to you, but there's still a lot of people around, you know, that take marriage seriously, oh, and ask one of them. Oh, it's true what I'm hearing, then. They are getting married. Is it? I've got no intention. Betty, them two have no intention of taking a breath when they wake up in the morning. They need pushing. That's why me and Rita decided to push them in the right direction, which we happen to think is towards each other. Well, you're going a damn funny way about it. Well, we're playing it for laughs, aren't we? But underneath, we're deadly serious. Going off the subject a minute... Can't get off it fast enough for me. As I was saying, going off the subject a minute, have you ever noticed how things have changed since Jermaine Greer opened her mouth? We might be liberated, but by gum, it's costing us a hell of a lot more. You know, there was a time I used to stroll into this bar and stand there looking helpless, and half a dozen fellas had rushed round to buy me a gin and tonic. <laughs> now, they wait until I get me first out, fumble with it, and then ask them what they're having. Well, that you was young and beautiful in them days. <clears throat> are you having a row with him, Betty? Because if you are, save a place for me. It ain't not worth arguing with. No, it's worth clouting round the ear old, though, as I was saying. Come on, darling, what are you going to have, a gin and tonic? Oh, thank you. No, no, no sir. then, I'm not having you taking all the credit for that, mate. It was my idea in the first place, you know. Alpha says, do yourself a favour, mate, propose to her. You're right, Ray, he says, about your experience, and down on his knees he goes. Stoned out of his skull, of course, but it all counts drunk or sober. Do you blame him? Having to listen to that load of rubbish? Yes, that is going too far. Ah, oh, put a sock in it. We're only a bit of a laugh, yeah. it? Might be a laugh to you, but it's not to him. He's going through it. Going through oh, it. Oh, stow it, mate. She's right. Hilda, if you want to say something, say it. Don't just stand there looking like Piffy on a rock bun. Oh, and here's me trying to be helpful. Look, all I'm saying is, don't take no notice of this lot round here. I don't. Ah, well, you're very wise. Because they don't look on marriage as a sacred institute, you know. Just a joke to them. I mean, take her next door to me, for instance. Now, going to the altar for her is like going for fish and six penneth. They got no respect for the vows. Hilda, I don't know what you're talking about, and I have a feeling you don't either. Now, is there anything else? Oh, I don't blame you wanting to keep it to yourself. The less they know around here, the better. Yes, well, thanks. Uh, anything else? Just so long as you know who your friends are. And if you ever do want to talk to somebody who can give you the ins and outs of what marriage has to offer, next door's always open. Don't be afraid to knock. Oh, well, I'll go at what they call an appropriative moment. <laughs> oh, honestly, some people. Uh, uh, how are you feeling this morning? Well, knowing what I got through last night, a lot better than I deserve. <laughs> Me and all. I mean, I felt a bit rough earlier on, but... Uh... You all right now, then? Oh, yeah. Like you say, considering what we shifted. <laughs> yeah, we did drink some stuff, didn't we? We didn't all. Uh, look, uh, about last night. Uh, yes, now, I've been meaning to speak to you about that. Uh, you weren't serious, were you? Well, uh, no more than you were. Uh, no, no, I thought not. What are you doing here, Mr. Birchill? I don't know where to go. Well, you better come inside. You won't do any good sitting there. You think Mrs. Howard will mind? Of course she won't. Come on, nobody's going to bite you. If only I knew why. 
I don't suppose you can understand that a man's wife can leave him and he doesn't know why. There couldn't be... No, no there's nobody else. No, Mrs. Howard asked me that. Uh, definitely nobody else. Well, like you said, there couldn't be. Well, there couldn't, could there? I don't know. I... No, no. Oh, I wouldn't mind if I wasn't so helpless. When you've been used to working all your life, bringing in the money, having everything done for you at home. I'm not saying I was idle about the house. I used to make things. But you can't eat bookcases, can you? Can I get you something? No, thanks, no. Oh, I didn't mean that... Oh, God, did it sound like... I think I'd better go. Don't be silly. I'll be making a cup of tea anyway. Go on, please. Sit down. I don't suppose Susie's uh, said anything about finding a mum, has she? No. If only I could talk to Margaret just for five minutes, find out why. It must be me, something that... No, oh, I don't know. I always used to think it was enough to do your best, meet your responsibilities. Must, must be other things. Things I missed out on, things I didn't do. I mean, if only she'd said, you know, give me a chance to... I mean, don't women always know when a man loves them? Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Howard. I'm sorry I'm bothering you again. Mr. Birchall just wondered if there was any news, Elsie. Well, I haven't heard anything. You? No, I was just saying. Look, you've both been very good. Look, can I ask you a favour? I mean, I don't know why you should, but, uh, well, when Susie gets in, if she's heard anything, will you let me know? Uh, I'll be uh, at the pub on the corner. I'll wait for about an hour, and if I, if I don't hear, then I'll assume that, um... I just want a chance to put things right, you know. Anyway, thanks. Ciao. Kill Susie and her mother. Yes, but well, take some advice from one who knows. Keep out of that. There's more to that lot than meets the eye. No, no, you've enough to do without feeding me. No, it's no trouble. I mean, I do have enough for both of us. Ah, well, maybe you have, but you don't have folk talking about us again. Yeah, and heaven knows we've had enough of that. <laughs> we have that. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it. It's better than being ignored. Yeah, well, you know what they say. That's the time to start worrying. <laughs> yeah. Right, then. Ah, right, then. Are, are you sure you want to have a bite? Oh, no, no, love. I've, uh, I've got a bit of uh, writing to do, you know. Well, it's only business uh, for union, but I best get it done. No, I, um, I just wanted to say we ought to, uh, you know, keep in touch and, uh, and go out together now and again. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Mind you, promise me one thing, no more council meetings. No more council meetings, promise. Oh, I think we enjoyed it, though, didn't we? I mean, not council meetings like, but, uh, you know, going out together. Yeah, I did. Excited and all. Right. 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 Not a bit fresh out there. Yeah, well, there is a touch of autumn in the air. Hi. Still, it is October. Hi. Uh, right. Hi. Right, then. Oh, hey. I'll, uh, I'll see you. Yeah. Bye. Hey, why don't you take cookery at night school? They have courses, you know, at the tech. It's a bit late for this year. Are you saying I don't feed you proper? No, it's just that you, if you knew a few special dishes, that you might have more interest in cooking. I shall never be as interested in cooking as you are in eating. Only a suggestion. Is that what you want? Cock a van and that? You only want chips with it. <laughs> yeah, would not I? Chips with everything. It's a play, that chips with everything. It's a reality with you. Only, uh, I thought you two better know first, seeing you pushed me into it. I think you're getting wed. Uh, no, we're not. Ah. Well, we were kidding, weren't we? Were you? Well, I were. I've just been round to see Rini, and she were. I see. Well, just answer me this. I mean, uh, if you were both kidding, why is it taking so long to get together to sort it out? Well... We... Shall I tell you? Cos you thought she meant it, and she thought you meant it, and you could both just have been right. 
Ah, well, we weren't, were we? I mean, we didn't mean it. You know, Alf, I think you're disappointed. Oh, my egg. Then, well, where's the big happy smile? Why are you looking like a bilious bloodhound? Well, I'm not looking like a bilious blood. This is how I look when I get sick of folk putting the rose in and putting me in a position where it's difficult for me to get out. Oh, so you did think she meant it? Did I, Eckers, like? Oh, come clean. Len's right. You're sorry it's all over. I'm a thump. It's just a... a well... Go on. Well, it don't matter, does it? I mean, I'm used to it, aren't I? Going back to an empty house and baked beans on toast. Ah. On my birthday. Ah. Is it your birthday? No. Which one? Well, don't make me feel worse. And that's all you've got for your party? Just a tin of baked beans? Ah. Well, Rini asked me to stay for a meal, like, but... She didn't know it was my birthday, though, but she did ask me... Well, I couldn't, could I? Shall we take pity on him? Ah, go on, why not? Right, Delph. You go home, get your tin of baked beans, and I'll put the kettle on. He means it and all. Well, I'm telling you, Mother, he's not been off the doorstep all day. Oh, now, as if I would, Mother, don't worry. Well, I will try, but I can't guarantee he won't follow me. Well, all right, then, I'll try, but... Try, then, Mum. Oh, and Mum, look after yourself, won't you? Try. I'd like a little word with you. Have you not had enough? No, I haven't. Your father was here earlier on. Big deal. He wants to talk to your mother to find out why she left home. He's at his wit's end. We will have a little talk. Do you want to know why he wants to speak to my mother? Because he loves her. Because he what? The only person on God's earth he loves is Bob Birchall. He wants to talk to my mother because he wants his skivvy back and if he can't have her, he'll have me. Do you know he sits there from the minute he gets home from work till the minute he goes to bed? Bring me, fetch me, carry me. Shall I tell you about this fellow you're so sorry for? We're talking about your father. I know I'm talking about. Do you think I'd say these things if they weren't true? Do you think I enjoyed watching him throw a plate at dinner at war because it weren't hot enough for him, my mother out at work all day? Do you know my mother's worked every day of her married life? Do you know that? You're being hysterical. I'm not being hysterical. He wants a skivvy and that's all. Does he? I asked him if he wanted something to eat. He said no. Why Because he, he wants no? to get round you, that's why. He wants to talk to your mother to find out why she left home. I am telling you to why find she out left why home. why she left home, because he honestly doesn't know. I've seen him, Susie. I you don't have to see him. I know him. Are you telling me your father left home because your mother wants him to wash his socks? It's not like it's that. I should hope not. Because I should expect to do that for my husband and I wouldn't leave home because he wanted me to. Don't you say a word about my mother. You do not know the life she's had. My mother used to be happy. She's not happy anymore because of him, because of what he's done to her. Oh, he doesn't hit her. He's far too clever for that. He knows enough to hit people to make their lives a misery. Why did you leave home, Susie? Why didn't you stop and help? That is a rotten thing to say, Gail. If you're telling me the truth, it's a lousy, rotten thing to do. <laughs> I told you not to interfere. <laughs> Ah, trust me, if I were to fall over, I'll fall over it. In every way. Come. Oh, nothing. Just feeling a bit sorry for myself, you know. Mortal sin, isn't it? Oh, I don't know, love. Everyone's entitled every now and again. Ah, times when things get on top of you, aren't they? Work, is it? No. no. One thing, love. Thinking of drowning your sorrows, you'll need something bigger than half-pine glass. Try it, fine. Ah, well, that's one thing I don't hold with. Well, it, it lets you forget your troubles for an hour or two, but uh, they're there next morning, aren't they? Ah, worse than ever. Ah, worse than ever. Thanks. It's her affair. Leave it at that. I just don't want to make things worse, Elsie. Honesty could do anything. Oh, we get over it. Lots of fellows have and survived. Where are you going? To see my loving father. Just don't make things worse. Do you know where he is? Don't tell her. Oh, she doesn't have to tell me. I know where he is. Where he always is. In the pub. And I know what he's doing. He's waiting for me. No, not you. Well, tough. That's who he's going to get. Leave it be. She's got to sort it out for herself. I've only got one thing to say to you. Get away from here and don't come back. Please, don't make a scene in here, love. Please, I don't want everybody to know my business. I'm telling you. Look, will you come outside, please? Let me 
let me tell you something, madam. Let go of me. Look, I've let him clothe you since you were 17 years let of age. Now you're me. damn well start I'll paying me. You. God help me, I'll let you. You do, and I'll mark you for life. Let... Now you get in that house, pack your things, and get home where you belong. Go to hell! Look, come here! Out of this morning, Mrs. Walker. Yes. There we are. Morning. Oh, good morning, Elizabeth. Well, that is it. Well, I'm trying to get my breakfast. Oh. First, the postman comes, then you arrive. A day that starts badly tends to continue badly and usually ends badly. Yes. Oh, thank you, dear. I don't like the look of the one on the top. Oh, this is a gas bill. Do you know I'm getting scared to death of opening mine? Every time a bill comes, it's gone up. Can't be the gas bill, dear. Oh. Paid mine three weeks ago. <laughs> Yes, effrontery. They mean it, Mrs. Walker, so you might as well pay it or they'll cut you off. But I have paid it. I paid it three weeks ago. I've got the receipt for it. Yes, well, one bill looks very much like the other. Perhaps it's the electric you paid. I can tell the difference between a gas bill and an electricity bill. I'm not in my dotage yet. Well, what I'm saying is that anybody can make a mistake. I mean, there was your television licence. You thought you'd paid that now, didn't you? That was a simple oversight. It could have happened to anyone. Yeah. There we are. Told you I'd paid it. Obviously their mistake, then. Obviously. <laughs> Nationalisation. <laughs> a bit of healthy competition and they'd have to pull their mm. socks up. <laughs> yeah, it was the computer. That's what's so false. Yes, but it won't be the computer I shall be talking to. Oh, dear me, no. <laughs> I shall be talking to the local manager at least. <laughs> the egg's as hard as a brick. Yes, well, you did say you didn't have much hope for the day, didn't you? reading the paper. I was listening and all. I've got ears as well as eyes, you know. Well, perhaps if you used your eyes as well as your ears, you'd know you're not the only one who lives in this house. Meaning what? Meaning that I, for one, do not want to listen to that row. I have enough of it at the shop all day, screeching down my ears. Oh, I her. You live off a diet, a radio, one normally. Yeah, well, not today. A day when you can rely on your friends to give you a lift. By it, you must be psychic whoever likes these horoscopes. You know, uh... I've been thinking what's the best thing to do. And it's, it's dead easy, it's simple. All you've got to do is tell your dad where your mum's stopping, then leave him alone to sort it out, which they'd probably do in five minutes flat. No chance. I am not telling him where my mother is. He'd be on to her then, wouldn't he, like he's on to me? Why is he on to you? He only wants to know where his wife is, which is perfectly natural. Yeah, he also wants me to go back and live with him. You what? You heard. Are you going? Oh, yeah. I'm on the next bus, aren't I? I mean, I'd love all that. Skivvying for him, running for him, fetching for him, carrying for him till my feet drop off. I don't know why you've got it in for him. I really don't. No, you don't, do you? Who's a little cutchy goo? Eh? Cutchy goo? No wonder they takes so long to talk, talking rubbish like that. She today. understands what I mean, don't you, darling? Oh, Bless your little cotton socks. Must be a red Indian, then. <laughs> what do you want to oh, sweet dear. Oh, dear. Well, some fellas have got a fine idea about putting up new guffering, haven't they? You are. The off-licensed commercial road, he said he'd be round there first thing this morning. No. They've been on the phone twice. Oh, 
When he finished playing Happy Families, do you think you could spare him a couple of minutes? Well, you never know your luck, mate. Chop, chop, eh? Alan Roberts is a mate of mine. Oh, Len, before you shoot off, uh, as Rita said out... What about? Night classes. She said you were coming to these keep fit classes with me. Oh, uh, yeah, but she said she might not be able to make it. Oh, well, tell her not to come crying to me when she's gone to seed. She already has. I'll tell her you said that. Oh, no, no, don't. No, please. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if you could help me. I'm not used to buying clothes for youngsters. Who's it for? Uh, Peter, my son. It's the right size, according to the label. Well, hi, Ken. Oh, hi, hi. Only, uh, well, the trousers seem a bit too long. Well, that's how they make them. What she means is they make them long so you can turn them up to your own size. Oh, I see. Saves them making lots of different sizes. Yeah, that's a good idea, that. Well, very bright in the rag trade. Um, are you serving him or am I? You are. Oh, because you seem to have taken over, so you best carry on. Oh, dear. That way out. Mm, obviously. I meant to get it while he was here, but we didn't have time. All right, well, look, uh, if it's the wrong size, bring it back. We don't normally change stuff, but it seems it's you. You mean I'm a privileged customer? Oh, of course. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Good. OK, bye. See ya. Come again. Laughs working with you. Were you what poked your nose in? I was only trying to help. Yeah, it'll help to all the world, don't you? He needs you, Susie. Oh, God. He does. You should have seen him yesterday. Look, I'll say this for the last time. My mother left him because she couldn't stand it any longer. So now he's lost her as a skivvy, he's looking for another one. Moggins, me. You don't believe a word I'm saying, do you? What is the use? All right, look, do me a favour. We've got to stay in here till 5.30 tonight. I won't mention your problems again if you don't, all right? After that, if you want to go and stick your head in a bucket, be my guest. Hello, Steve. Come on, then. You just me to marry you again, have you? Mrs. Ogden, I do wish you would bring the milk bottles through with you if they're lying on the step. They tend to disappear if they're left there all morning. All right, Mrs. Walker. And what do you think you're doing? Well, it's a cup of tea time, isn't it? 11 o'clock. You've only been here a quarter of an hour. Oh, yeah, well, I know I was a bit light like, but uh, I'll make it up, or you'll get your time out of me, don't fret. Mrs. Ogden, I have meticulously planned my morning so that I should be out of this room while you're working in it. Now, I must admit that I overlook the fact that your capacity for tea is almost equal by your husband's capacity for beer, but I do wish you would make some effort. In other words, get my finger out. Your words, Mrs. Ogden, not mine. Half an hour. Oh, Mrs. Walker. What is it now? You're out for digestive biscuits. I thought you'd like to know. Half an hour. Hello, love. What do you want? We've got nothing to say to each other, Dad. Oh, come on now, love. Listen, I please. did. Last night, I didn't like what I heard. I thought I made that very plain. Ah, but things get said, don't they, in the heat of the moment? Next day, you forget all about them. I haven't forgotten what I said. Oh, come on, love. Think... You wouldn't just have a roof over your head, you know. You'd, ha you'd have a house of your own. To run just like you want. You, you soon get a job, local. You're a bright kid. Yeah, bright enough to see right through you to just what I'd be letting myself in for. Like I said, Dad, no way. Do you understand plain English? No. You, you selfish little cow. For 21 years I've sweated upon a roof over your head. Sweated? 21 years! My mother did all the sweating. You just sat on your backside. Now, please, Dad, go away. Look, I haven't finished with you, sunshine, not by a long chalk. Oh, yes, you have. I finished with you years ago when I was old enough to see just what you are. Now, please, Dad, leave me alone. I will see about that, won't we? We'll see about it. So just make sure you get paid cash on the nail when you've done that lot, right? All right, all right. Oh, excuse me. 
the factory over here. Do you, do you know the names of any of the bosses? Uh, well, the boss is Mr. Baldwin. Baldwin? Oh, but if you want to see him, you're going to be unlucky. I'm afraid he's in London today. Oh. Well, perhaps my husband could help you. He works at the factory. Hello. Uh, Ernest, this gentleman was looking for Mr. Baldwin, but oh. I told him he was in London. Yeah, I'm afraid he is. Anything I can do, I'm wages clerk and general dog's body over the road there. Well, uh, my name's Birchill, Bob Birchill. Birchill? Oh, are you any relation to Susie? Hi, I doubt, yeah. Well, actually, it was Sue I wanted to see Mr. Baldwin about, you see. Um, well, we've got a bit of trouble at home, you know. My, my wife, she's, uh, she's gone. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. Um, she can't have been very old. Oh, no, no, I don't mean dead. No, she's just gone. She's left without any warning, you know, no reason. And you know, just put 21 years of happy marriage behind her, just like that. Well, I don't quite see what this has got to do with the factory. Oh, well, Susie wants to come back home, you see, to look after me. Ah. But she doesn't, you know, she doesn't want to uh, cause any trouble here, leaving it a moment's notice. Oh, well, I'm sure Mr. Baldwin wouldn't mind in the circumstances, sure would he? Sure he would, no. So I can take it then that uh, she can leave by the weekend? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We'll be sorry to lose her. That's a great girl, isn't she? Yeah. Anyway, thanks very well, much. Fine. Bye. Much obliged. Bye. Ta-da. What a nice man. <laughs> Winters. Oh. I don't want any water, love. I've done them. Without water? Well, I had some, didn't I? Clean water? Well, near enough. They'll do, I suppose. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Thanks very much, love. ta -da. Oh, Mr. Ogden, I owe you for my windows, don't I? Uh, you do, Mrs. Walker, but uh, if you want to leave it like, you know. Pardon? Well, until things are better. I, I know what it's like, and uh, you've never let me down. Would you mind telling me what you're talking about? Well, uh, tick, like, you know. Tick? Unless you want to pay me in kind. Like, I would say, uh, a couple of pints at dinner time, you know. I certainly do not know. Are you seriously suggesting that I cannot pay to have my windows cleaned? Well, it's a question of priorities, isn't it? Always pay the things they can cut off. That's what I say. Nobody is going to cut off anything, Mr. Ogden. Gas will, if you don't pay it. Uh, I see. There is your money, Mr. Ogden. For your information, the gas ward have had theirs and the length of my tongue, which somebody else will be having very shortly. Oh, Mrs. Walker, the brewery phone, and I said you'd... First things first, Elizabeth. Oh, I want a word with you and you, Bert. And you too, Mrs. Elton, if you don't mind. Yeah. Someone in my employment has been spreading gossip, completely unfounded gossip about my financial situation. I want to know who it is. Huh? Well, it's not me. No, not me. What sort of gossip? They're saying I'm so low in funds that I can't afford to pay for Mr. Ogden to clean my windows. Oh, well, I just did happen to mention it to Stan in passing, but I've not said nothing that wasn't gospel truth. You've not paid your gas bill, have you? For your information, Mrs. Ogden, I have just returned from the gas showrooms where I showed them the original bill which I paid three weeks ago. The reminder should not have been sent. It was a mistake. They admit it and they have apologised. Oh, well, that's all right, then. It, it is not all right. You should never have looked at that reminder. You were snooping. Oh, I was never snooping. Shouldn't have left it lying about if you didn't I have did to I did not leave it. it lying about, but that is beside the point. If you wish to continue working here, Mrs. Ogden, you will regard everything you see and hear as absolutely private. Do you understand me? Yeah. I have been in this public house 40 years this very month, and not once in that time have I, or my dear Jack before me, owed a penny to a single soul, which is more than can be said for some people around here. I'm telling you, Hilda. Well, we've only got her word for it. She's paid it, haven't we? She's shown me the receipt. Oh, I'd expect you to stick up for her. What's mm. all that about? 
She got a demand note for a gas bill this morning that she paid a bit back, which just somehow managed to come to the attention of the dreaded Hilda, who told <laughs> Stan, who in his infinite wisdom managed to tell Mrs Walker... How does he do it? <laughs> Hey, I'll just see Annie Walker. One quick word. Yeah, it'll have to be quick enough, cos it's not very easy to talk when your breath's been stopped. You are. Out. All right, all right. Then. What are you doing here? I thought you were stopping at work for your dinner. Not today. Well, everything's all right, isn't it? I mean, you haven't got the sack around, have you? I just wanted uh, a change for a bit, a, piece, a bit of peace and quiet, all right? Oh, oh, oh when you thought you'd get it here. Yeah, at least I won't have Radio 1 screeching down my ears and Gail give me dirty looks. Look, love. What? We've got to sort this out, this business about your father. Look, Elsie, I don't want to talk about it, all right? Neither do I, but somebody's got to talk about it. We can't go through the rest of our lives like this. I've told him to get lost. What more can I do? Well, all right, then. That's finished. It's an end to it, isn't it? No, it's not the end to it. Well, of course it is. What else do you think he's going to do? Kidnap you and run off with you under his arm down the street? You don't know my dad. Look, are you sure you're not painting him blacker than he actually is? You and all. Well, he, see, he seems all right. Everybody says so. Oh, I see. Uh, can I have a word with Susie? Hey, you're welcome. I didn't know you came home at this time, time of the day. I was looking for you at the shop. Oh, and she just uh, fancied a change. Oh. Yeah, I was very sorry to hear about your mother. Hey? Going off like that. Who told you? Your father. When? Well, he came to the factory. Well, he met me outside the factory, actually. Now, what I came to say was I may not be able to pay you everything this week. You know, pay you up. Pay but... me up? No, but it's all right. You can leave on Friday. I mean, I'll, I'll square it with Mike. Ernest, what are you talking about? She's not leaving. Are you? No. I, I don't understand. Your father said you wanted to go home and, and look after him. And uh, you didn't want to let us down, so I'm starting the ball rolling. And you still think I'm painting him blacker than what he is? It's not true. She doesn't want to leave. Your shake is like. But why? But what could he possibly hope to get out of it? Oh, search me. But it's obvious he's prepared to play very dirty. You finished, love? Yep, till the next time. Which, by my reckoning, should be about tomorrow. Do you know, when I was a kid, my mum used to fill me head with stories about little girls who got turned into fairy tale princesses and whisked off by knights in shining armour. And I were daft enough to believe her. Just to show what a liar your mum was. Uh, she never said a rotten thing about cooking and cleaning and dusting and washing nappies. Still, all goes to show life never turns out how you expect it to. That's yeah, just as well. I got my heart set on taking over from Flash Gordon. I don't even like flying in aeroplanes with my space rockets. I don't mean like that. Well, how do you mean? Well, us. Look at us. Well, what about us? We've got a little palace, a little princess of his own. Well, that's just what I mean. Sometimes I have to pinch myself to make sure it's really happening to me. Ah, you mean you didn't think it'd turn out as it has? Work? Well, if you remember, there was this idiot called Deirdre Hunt who couldn't stand the sight of this loudmouth yob called Ray Langton. Ah, yes, but then she scratched the surface and found out that underneath it was solid gold, didn't she? And the thought of washing nappies used to bring me out in spots, and look at me now. You know, I always reckon that babies were the devious plot to bring the drinking classes to its knees. <laughs> what happened to us? We grew up. Hmm. I'm not disappointed, are you? What do you think? See you at tea time. Hey, you've got five minutes yet, haven't you? Time for a wet. Oh, you've got it made, haven't you? Me, Tracy and the booze. Yeah, I think so. Still, I always were a clever lad. See ya. <laughs> there you are, love. Thank you, my Hey, you better get another one in. He gets sulky if he's not included in the round, you know. Oh, thank you, Len. Just a half for me, please, okay. Betty. I've got to work this afternoon. Even these two haven't. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Miss Walker, about? About, yes, but unless it's a matter of life and death, lover. No, 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 it isn't. I just want to give her this book. She asked me to find it for, and I dug it out in the library. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. Thank you. I'll give it to her. Right. What does she want this for? Oh, just interested, I suppose. Is there anything about this place in there? <laughs> no, no, it's just uh, not specifically. It's just about names. Names? Yeah, pub names. You can tell a lot about an area from names, you know. For instance, if you see pubs called uh, the Anchor, the Sailor's Farewell, the Bell, the Lighthouse, well, you know you're in a port, don't you? Then, on the other hand, if you see the Weaver's Arms, the Engineer Colliers, you know you're in an area like this. Oh, that's true. I was born next door to Cloggers. It was pretty old, that, too. Ah. Yeah. ah, now, the oldest name around here would be the Ash Tree on Commercial Road. It's about the coldest pub around here and all. It's like a mausoleum in there. How come the Ash Tree? Well, because trees and shrubs and stakes in the ground are one of the oldest methods of showing the whereabouts of an alehouse. Oh, I don't see why they should have to have names. So your missus will know where you are. <laughs> 
And if you're interested, I'll let you borrow it and Mr. Walker's finished with it. Oh, no, thank you, mate. Oh, Amy probably wrote it. He's done enough research into that, tell you. Hey, Ken, I don't suppose you know when Jack and Annie Walker moved in here. She moved in here? Well, it was something she said earlier on about, uh, about 40 years this month. Oh, well, I bet she'd have been here then. Mm. Who's your funny friend? You weren't even a gleam in your <coughs> daddy's eye then, were you, love? Ah, but she's been a filthy leer on fella's faces ever since. <laughs> she it like to. Look, I know that Billy is 39 this year. And he was born here, so it must be roughly 40 years, but as for the exact date... Hey, 40 years. This is a long time, isn't it? Calls for a celebration, that, don't it? It's about time we had a knees up in here. Yes. Annie wouldn't thank you for that. She wouldn't like to be reminded she'd been in here 40 years. But do you believe her dad's as bad as she makes out? I don't know what to believe, but it's not like Susie to make it up, is it? I trust you to be on her side. Well, it's not. I just don't believe her, that's all. I reckon she's got it in for him. Something he did to her as a kid. Kicked a teddy bear or something. Oh, that's daft, that is. Psychological claptrap. Ooh, get him. Look, Gail. It'll all blow over. Take it from me. Susie's not the sort to stop down in the dumps for long. And that's why you like her, is it? Well, she's not, is she? She's not the type. What type am I? Eh? You heard? What type am I? I don't know. You've known me as long as you've known Susie. You seem to know what type she is. What type am I? Oh, you're different, aren't you? Different? <laughs> different? Oh, come on, Steve. You can do better than that. Well, Susie's so... I don't know. Well, she's so full of life, isn't she? And if I'm different, then I'm not full of life. Is that what no, you're saying? No, no, no. Then what are you saying? Hey, hang on a minute. I've played this game before. What game? You know, winding me up. Women do that. You know a lot about women, do Look, you? Look, there you go again. You and Susie are different, chalk and cheese. But that's not to say that you're not... Well... Not what? All right. Nice. Nice. Hmm. Well, she's not full of life at the moment, is she? Oh, I still say she'll come bouncing back. Would you? Words wouldn't come in an easy way. You're going somewhere? Yeah, I am. Where? I'm just going. Where? Anywhere. Anywhere you can't find me. Look, Elsie, thank you for everything. I I've left my rent on the dressing table, all right? Now, just a Look, minute. Look, just let me go, OK? Come on, it's me you're talking to. Now, what good is running away going to do? Now, come on. Look, you've seen how far he'll go to get me back. You saw that at dinner time. Embarrass him like that at work. And he'll not stop there, Elsie. He will not be off your doorstep. At least by my going, I'll get him off your back. It's my problem, Elsie, not you. Now, look, as long as you're under my roof, it's my problem too. It's my battle, and I'm prepared to fight it with you. Now, if you want to run away, I'm not going to stop you. But if you want to stay and fight, I'm with you all the way. Now, it's up to you. <laughs> ah, come on, baby. Take on him, Lovie. He's got them up and about yet. Well, she's on a second cup of tea. Has she twigged about party, do you reckon? I don't know. I was just wondering. Good morning, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Do you think I might issue a tiny order of the day? I'd be my guest. Well, it's about the bar. It's been rather dirty lately. Well, that's Hilda's job to do the Indeed one. it is. But once it is clean, it's up to you, Elizabeth, and you bet to keep it that way. Mm. Not a wash with beer and cigarette ash as it was last night. Now, it only needs a little effort to maintain a decent standard. Mm hmm yeah, why do we bother? Because we're simple. Simple? We're stark staring man. <coughs> Look, she tears strips off us as if we're old wallpaper hanging on damp walls. Here we are trying to organise a surprise party for her and all. Ah, I don't know why we bother. Well, it's too late to stop now. We've oh. set wheels in motion. Any road I've laid the grub on. Mm. Watch it, Kate. Oh, hello. What's going on round here, isn't there? Well, I work here and all, you know. I'm entitled to know about it. Hilda, keep it out, eh? I'll find out sooner or later, don't you, Frat? Oh, you will, Elder. You will. 
What else does she say? Well, hang on. I've not read it myself yet. Has anybody seen my mascara? Yeah, it's on the sideboard. Oh. Susie's just had a letter from her mum. Oh? What's she got to say? Well, she's going to stay with her friend Edie a bit longer till she sorts herself out, you know. Oh. Thank God your father's not found me yet. Please, please, please don't tell him where I am. Oh, that sounds like a cry from the heart, that does. You know, I don't know she's stuck here for 20 years. Oh, I don't, honest. you're ever so stupid. I got it all wrong about your dad. I'm ever so sorry, Susie, but you really made me believe you were getting it in. Hmm? He's very good at that. People that don't live with him think he's lovely. Well, I'm sorry I got it modelled up. And I'm sorry I interfered. Oh, forget it. It's not your problem anyway. I'm just not bothered as long as he doesn't get on to my mother and as long as he leaves me alone. Maybe he's given up. We've not seen him for nearly a week. Yeah, or well, perhaps somebody told him he's got me to cope with, so he's lying low. Mm. Well, you've had a lot of practice of putting the wind up, fellas, haven't you, Elsa? I'm not quite sure I have to take that remark. Oh, good, she'll like that. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Tra. Is that the brewery you're on to? Yeah, they're sending a VIP along about nine o'clock. One of your actual Cresswell family. Oh, she'll like that, you know. She sort of looks on them as a minor royalty. I hope. <clears throat> oh, you think you're very clever, don't you, the pair of you? Yeah, we do. I know when I'm being talked about behind my back, you know. Yeah, we were talking about something, Hilda. It wasn't you, lovely. What were it about, then? We're not telling you. Oh, it's like that, is it? Well, how do I know it's not something I should know about? Like someone to do with my position in this pub, for instance. Oh, I think I'd better have a word with Mrs. Walker. I mean, if the summer to her bar staff know that I don't. Hey, no, Elder, don't go bothering Mrs. Walker. Look, we'll tell you. We're organising a surprise party for her. A surprise Shh. party? Shh! She doesn't know. It's a surprise. That's why it's called a surprise party. Yes, you see, she's been landlady here 40 years this month. So, you see, Hilda, it is a sort of a milestone. Oh, yeah. 40 years. Now, that's ruby for weddings. I don't know what it is for pubs, though. Well, that's why we didn't tell you, you see, Hilda. We didn't want it getting all over the place and getting back to Mrs Walker. Oh, well, it wouldn't have got all over the place from me. I can keep her confidence, you know. I could have helped you plan things. I think it's very hurtful not letting me in on it. Yes, well, we know you'd have kept it dark, Hilda, but uh, you're married, aren't you? You might have talked in your sleep, and then your Stan would have blabbed it round. Look, I don't talk in my sleep, and even if I did, Stan wouldn't listen. <coughs> uh, going out, Mrs Walker? Just a small shopping expedition, oh. dear. Everything under control. Uh, How do you mean? Everything's fine, Mrs Walker. Good, good. <laughs> I'm a bit panicked there. For a minute, I thought she suspected something. Ah, oh, well, if she does, she hasn't got it from me, and nobody can say she has. She doesn't know a thing. She can't know. She won't half get an eye opener tonight. Someone else, isn't there? I know that look of yours. Like a cat that knows where there's a budgie's cage open. You've got something up your sleeve, haven't you? I might have. In fact, I have. But you'll just have to wait till tonight to find out what it is. Both of you. Go on, I'll take them. What do you want a pair of passion killers for? Oh, are you joking? I'm hoping they're going to be passion rousers. Either for me, keep fit class, it's me night tonight. Ray minds Tracy and I go leaping about. No, no, fancy that myself, all that bending and stretching. It's like PT at school. Oh, no, it's a lot of fun. I reckon it's doing me good and all. I've got a delivery for you. Which of you's nobbled him, then? Chance to be a fine thing. Well, perhaps he's shy, he just needs a bit of encouragement. Oh, I'm giving him encouragement. I'm wasting my time, he fancies her. He's wasting his time. Oh, what's up with him? He seems a nice-looking lad. I think he's lovely. Well, you crack as you. Yeah, he's all right, but he's a bit wistful for me. You know, a bit like your pet dog, Rover. No, I fancy me a bit more exciting myself. That's the second time you've called him a dog. Well, <laughs> ta oh. Woof, woof. Some more jeans and some denim waistcoats. Oh, Thank you. Oh, Steve. I could put the kettle on. It's no trouble. Uh, I haven't got time, though. I've got a lot of stuff to drop off at the station. Uh, Susie, do you mind if I say something? Oh, depends what it is. Well, it's, uh, like about your dad. You know, when you were saying what he was like, I thought you were laying it on a bit. Well, I'm sorry I didn't believe you from the start. Oh, forget it. You've never met him. No. Anyway, uh, if you need any help, if you want me to do anything, you only have to say. Well, I'll best be going. Trusted. He 
do anything for you. Yeah, but I don't reckon you'd do it very well. I would like to ask a question. How are you going to organise a party for Annie Walker in her own pub without her finding out? I will answer you that, Ken, with great difficulty. Mm. But she's not sussed anything yet. <laughs> now, while I think about it, there's the grub. Now you're talking. Now, I've ordered it from Robinson's for this mm. afternoon, but obviously they can't deliver it here, so really what I'm looking for is a volunteer to take it in and mind it well tonight. All right, I don't mind. Sorry, Stan. No way, love. Why not? For the same reason as they wouldn't employ you as a night watchman in a brewery, Chuck. <laughs> is uh, Deirdre in this afternoon, Ray? Because I don't think any of the rest of us are. Yeah, she is. It can come to our house. Yeah. OK, I'll ring Robinson's and tell them. Only just make sure it's locked after that, sir. Yeah. They'll be safe in our place. I'll make sure I will not touch them. ta -da. Ta -da. Oh, and by the way, you have a visitor. Susie's father. Oh, have I? I half right. expected it. Well, he's battering on the door like he's demented. Is he by a like? <laughs> Uh, yes, but uh, I rather think Elsie can handle it. She usually does. I think you'd better come in unless you want the whole street to know about your family affairs. Look, it's Susie I want. Uh, She's not here. Sit down, Mr. Birchall. Go on, sit down. Now, don't you think it'd be a good idea if you left her in peace for a bit? It's none of your business. I know what's best for her. She's my daughter. Yes, she also happens to be a grown-up young woman as well. And if she doesn't want to live with you and be at your beck and call, that's something you've got to accept. Her place is at home. Yeah, but what you're overlooking is her home is where she wants to make it. And that doesn't happen to be with you at the moment. Oh, look, think of her for a minute. She's a young woman. She's got a whole life in front of her and she's happy where she is. And, and shouting the odds at her isn't it going to get her back to you. Oh, I see. It's all her side of the story, isn't it? It doesn't occur to you that I've got a point of view, does it? I don't think I want to hear it, Mr Birchall. Now, why don't you stop hounding her and just get your own affairs organised? And I'm sure if you did that, she'd think a lot more of you. Oh, it's beginning to make sense, Mrs. Howard. I'm not with you. All her cheek and impudence. I can see where she's getting it from. You never like this at home, you know. Still, I suppose if you live with somebody long enough, you get to be like... Now, just a minute, Mr. Birch. No wonder she won't be told when she's learning from somebody like you. I've heard a few things about you, Mrs. Howard. You're well known around here. Well, I'm not having my daughter turning out like you. No, thank you very much. Get out of here before I land you. Well, so help me, I will. My God, you would too, wouldn't I you? I will. Now, get out. Now. Don't worry. I've said all I need to say to you, Mrs. Howard. Right, you're coming home. I am not, Dad. Will you leave me alone? Get in the car. Dad, you're will you leave home. me? Get in the car. Leave me alone, will you, Dad? Please. Look, get in the car. I'm going to call her. I'm not coming home, Dad. Hey, what's going you on? You keep your nose out. Get it. Get over in the other Hey, look, look, just leave it alone. Get Take your hands off her. No, shut up. Get over. Let go of her. Right, big man. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? You've hurt him. You... Right, I've done with you. A lot of you. You can do what you like, but don't come running to me for help when you're in trouble. You're just like your mother, so you can... I've done with both of you, right? Are you really all right? Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. It's good riddance, but are you OK? Well, I'm not too sure. Answer you, Sir Galahad. Well, sort of. <laughs> laughing though when I think of Steve. He came galloping across that Rolex like and George and the dragon. <laughs> the only trouble was the dragon walloped him. Well, he only try to help. It shows how lovely he oh, is. Oh dear, I know, but he looks so astonished. You should have seen him. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. It wasn't funny at the time. I don't think it's funny now. Well, just as long as my dad stays away, I don't care. I don't want to see him again, ever. Oh, that's not him, is it? I'll go. Time, weren't we, Susie? <coughs> it's just nerves. I heard you were a real hero. I didn't do anything. I just uh, got in her dad's way a bit. That's not what I heard. I heard you were wonderful. Oh. Well, I wasn't really. Hey, look, there's this do one at the Rovers tonight because Annie Walker's been there 100 years or something. Do you fancy going? Oh, are you going, Susie? No, I don't fancy it. Oh, me neither. You know, you sometimes sound like a record of a... Evening. 
Evening. Well, here we are. What is it they used to say in them old films? Let the good times roll. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Mrs. Walker? In the sitting room, and that's where we wanted to stop until we're good and ready for it. We've got a kitty, haven't we? Give us a pint. Elder. Yeah. There's a nice big glass of sherry for you on the house if I can borrow your stand for two minutes. Follow him! What you want him for? Secret mission. Oh, stop mocking about. Give us a pint, though. Just can I have him, Elder? Yeah, all right, go on then. Hey. Hey, but think on. Come. He's a respectable married man. I want him back in the same condition as what he left here. <laughs> Ray, will you leave that food alone? I'm only looking. Just keep your hands off it. Hey, I thought you said you were going to go to a class to do them exercises. What's all this then? Homework? No, I'm just loosening up. Mm, great. Always fancy a loose woman. You get off. Hey, you could do it doing a few exercises yourself, you know. Me? Mm. Fit as a fiddle, me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to be in my own carrier. Right. What are you doing practicing at Talkie Cook if it's next to Lynn? Oh, it's me exercises. Oh, ah, uh, you've started going to the evening class at Bessie Street. That's the uh, party stuff. What's the hurry? No hurry, I want a pint, that's all. Just a minute, let me have a look. Ray, you've been sampling the eats, haven't you? Well, I did just taste a pint, a couple of butties. They're very good. Oh, honestly, anybody think <clears> I'm ever thirsty? They'd have been safe at our place, but you wouldn't listen, would you? All right, all right. It's not an hanging job, is it? Any road, at least my figure can stand a bit of guzzling, unlike some I could mention. Hey, he's right, you know, love. I mean, I wouldn't mention it, but uh, you could do with some exercise, oh. like Deirdre. Stanley Ogden, may God forgive you. Uh, Come on, let's get this grub to the Rovers. And, Ray, mm. you've had your eats already, so no second help. No. It's all right. Yes. Yeah. Right, I'd better be making tracks and all. Um, listen, love, are you looking on Tracy at about 8 o'clock? Yeah, OK. Don't wake her up if she's asleep. I know I look daft, but I'm not really enough. <laughs> hey, what about a kiss? Oh, it's all right. Time you're coming home? Oh, about half past nine. Well, get back as quick as you can, and then we can have the last hour at that rave up. I've arranged for Emily Bishop to take over here. Oh, aren't you the crafty one? Good looking with it and all. Oh, oh, smashing, you've got the Joanna sorted out. Stan, put the food on these tables. Oh, hey. yeah, I've earned that pint. Will you wait your sweat and stop yattering? I can't think. Now, have we got everything? Everything but the leading lady. A pint, a bit, a please. Hang on a minute, we're trying to sort things out. I think everything's straight and most of the people are here, love. Right, Betty, go and get her through. OK. Now, remember, when she comes through, give her a big array. Yeah. I'm trying to get a pint, I can't get one. Oh, look, give over your big soft lump. Haven't you soft enough? I've soft out yet, have I? You will be, hold on. Mrs Walker, have your minute, lovey. It's a little party for you. We've laid it all on, and all you've got to do is just enjoy it. Forty years at the Rovers return with you, Mrs. Walker. That's what we're celebrating. Mm -hmm. Come on. She's a jolly good fellow, she's a jolly good fellow, she's a jolly good fellow. And so say I, all of us. She's a jolly good fellow. I'm very moved. I don't know what to say. <laughs> How about things all round? Oh, that's a good idea. Mr. Ogden, you've solved my problem. Oh, thank you. Oh, you can't think how much you've helped me. Perfectly. Elizabeth, Beth, see as everybody has a right, good we'll <laughs> All the very best, Mrs. Walker. Everything you wish yourself. Congratulations. We hope to see you for many years to come in the Rovers, darling. Thank you. It's a wonderful gesture. Everybody's been so kind. <laughs> and we're all very pleased to be part of it, Mrs. Walker. But I gather it was Bet and Betty's idea. Yes. Well, I'm as fortunate with my staff as I am with my customers. Elizabeth Bett, I'm very touched. Oh, it's a great pleasure, Mrs. Walker. Just enjoy the evening. Mrs. Walker, do you mind telling me something? Yes, dear. You've got your best frock on. You only ever wear that for special occasions. That's true. And I think I know what you're suspecting. But you see, dear, after 40 years on these premises, there is nothing Absolutely nothing that escapes my notice. Well, I'll be blown, and I thought we'd kept it a dead secret. <laughs> well, Mrs. Walker, there's at least one thing that you know nothing about. Aye. Len, will you do the necessary if we're all set? Certainly. What's she up to now, Elizabeth? I don't know, Mrs. Walker. It's as big a mystery to me as it is to you, love it. You ready? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, zero! What a wonderful oh, surprise. <laughs>
Even a filthy beggar like that has got a protecting angel. Boring sitting here. Wish I hadn't given Barry the push now. Who? Oh. Barry, that rugby player. You said you didn't like him. You said he gave you the creeps. He did. But at least he was male. And available. Oh, come on, let's go to that do at the Rovers. Oh, I don't fancy it. Go, you go. I don't want to go on my own. Come on, it'll cheer you up. They'll all be talking, won't they, about me and the bust up in the street with my dad? No, they won't. Well, yes, they will, but they'll all be on your side. You don't. You go. I mean, I've got nothing to wear. Yes, you have. You can wear that green blouse. It's Elsie's. Yeah, but it looks good on you. Go on. I dare you. Money River. and flying over like that. You must be doing very well out there, Billy. Not bad. Yeah? I must say, Billy, your turning up like that was one of the nicest things I could have wished for. It wasn't me, you know, Annie. It was Bet's idea. I just picked him up when he landed and kept him hidden until the right moment. Yeah. Until Bet phoned me up in Jersey, I had no idea you clocked up 40 years in here. 40 years this month. Is it? That must make it, what, 1937? 40 years is almost a lifetime. I had no idea you'd be here that long, Mrs Walker. Oh, you must remember that I was very young when we started. I mean, when Jack and I came here, I was barely old enough to set foot in licensed premises, let alone run one. Excuse me. Hello, you two. Hello. You're uh, looking very nice in that blouse. It suits you very well. Thank you. Yeah, it suits it, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you can have it. Oh, thanks, Elsie. Oh, yeah, it'll only cost you a fiver. <laughs> Yeah, do you fancy a butty? Uh, then Sam, and then cheese and onion. But before you say out, any finger marks on the bread's got nothing to do with our stand. Who have they got to do with? Ray Langton, he was put in charge of them. Big mistake. I don't think we're very hungry, Hilda. Oh, well, suit yourself. They're very nice. How are you feeling, Susie? I'm fine, thanks. It must have been an awful experience. Well, I'm trying not to think about it, actually. Hey, isn't Ernest a good player? Should we go listen to him? Yeah. I can't help thinking how your father would have enjoyed himself tonight. Yeah, he liked this place, didn't he? He loved it. Always oh, something of a mystery to me, but he did. Now, you're not going to let this party get you all depressed, are you? No, no. I'm just wondering where the 40 years have gone to. It seems like no time at all. Well, pretty packed 40 years, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. We may not have lived through the most gracious period in the history of the world, but nobody can say it hasn't been eventful. Been happy years, Billy. Not all of them, of course. But I do know I've been a very fortunate woman. With your father, of course. And with my children. Excuse me for butting in, Mrs. Walker. Mr. Cresswell's here from the brewery. Mr. Cresswell, how yes. very kind of him. Young Mr. Cresswell. I think he wants to make a speech. Mm. And I think that this party here tonight, this, as it were, spontaneous tribute, tells us something very important of how Mrs. Walker's customers, uh, no, I should say her friends, oh, feel yes. about her. Now, I, I'm not going to stand here all evening holding up the celebrations uh, or preventing the sale of Newton and Ridley's excellent ales. <laughs> but I must say this. We at Newton and Ridley's also feel very strongly about Mrs. Walker. For 40 years now, the rover's return has been a byword for those qualities which we most value in a public house. Courtesy, friendliness, and of course a certain very individual style. Uh, the seasoning, shall I say, which provides all these other qualities with their finest flavour. Mrs Walker, we at Newton and Ridley's would like to present you with this silver tray as a tribute to your 40 years at the rover's return and as a token of our appreciation, affection, and esteem. Thank you, Mr. Cresswell. Thank you very much. It's really lovely. Ernie, 
play so much. Yeah, yeah, so I've got some... <laughs> Never mind about on call. Let's have an Ellie Dean again. <laughs> oh, you're very, very easy to please. I'll say that for you. That was a very old joke, dear. Yeah, what was? You never change, do you? No, oh, why? Do you want me to? So we decided to give her a do. I mean, forty years is a long time to be in the same pub, isn't it? There's no sign of him. Deirdre, I found your handbag. The handbag? Yeah, I was on the viaduct. You must have dropped it. Oh, yeah. Are you hurt? No. You sure? Yeah. Bloody rat. Fellas like him, and I've killed him. Are you sure you're all right? I will be. I'll phone police then, shall I? Police? Well, yeah. You've been attacked, love. Who says I've been attacked? He, he just jumped out on me, that's all. It's the same thing. It's a police job, love. No. Would you not want him catch? Because I bloody do. I don't want any police. I don't want any police. All right. <laughs> well, just take it easy. <laughs> oh, it might have been worse, mightn't it? It might have been a lot worse. <laughs> Thank you all for the splendid party. Now, when I first realised what was going on, I had very mixed feelings. I wasn't sure that I wanted to be reminded that I'd been here 40 years. Oh, I said that. I said that, didn't I, Stan? I said it to you. You'll not want to be reminded, I said. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. And then I thought, well, you can't ignore most of your life. In fact, the very best days. What was the name of that play? 40 years on. And what an eventful 40 years they've been. Oh, how people have changed, how the world has changed, how my world has changed. My dear Jack gone, my son practically a stranger, though a very welcome visitor here tonight. 
And for that stroke of genius, I do thank that. But with all the changes, some bad, some good, one thing has been constant. I do feel that I've lived among friends. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Thank you all. Three cheers for Mrs. Walker. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! She's a jolly good fellow. Well, she's a jolly good fellow. And so do they all of us. Have you credited it? Yeah. Well, she's nearly got me in tears. No, they don't breed them like Mrs. Walker anymore. Do you know what? I reckon she was born with her hair done, her makeup on, and her back straight. I like her. So do I, really. Well, respect her. Nobody's all bad. I've just said that about me. I was thinking about me. Come on, man. Give us a chance. Now you're back in my good books tonight. You don't go reading some attention to it. I'm just grateful for a few crumbs. You're a dog, you are. But lovely with it. Oh. Help. The thing I like best about Jersey is the outdoor life. Swimming, sailing, all things like that. I've even taken up golf, you know. And when you think about it, up here you get what? Two months in the year when you can do things outside. That's if you're lucky. Oh, you don't look the outdoor type to me. Oh, I didn't used to be. I used to carry lumps of lead around in the bags under my eyes. Oh, I'm a new man now, you know. Would it make a new girl out of me? You look all right to me. Thank you. Billy, isn't it time you were circulating? I don't think you've spoken to Kenneth, have you? Ah, uh, not yet, no more. All right, see you later, tell her. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> He's twice your age, you know, dear. Pardon? And a world apart in practically everything else. Hey, only girls, I'm a pole, will you? I think I've had enough now to do some new ale. Thank you. Well, don't forget it was your idea. Yeah, all right. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Get, 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 get the old piano. <laughs> Could you sing it solo? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Come on, you can all join in. Yeah, I think we should, Hilda. Of course, it was before my time, you know. But not much, really. Oh, happy to see what's keeping Ray and Deirdre. They're going to miss everything. Of course he'd grab me. Whereabouts? Uh, my arm, this one, I think. What did you do? I struggled, didn't I? I, mean, I wasn't going to let him... Well, did he keep hold? Deirdre? I think... Yeah, yeah, he, he did. Then what? Well, I, I must have got away. I, I must have pulled away eventually. And you ran home? Yeah. Did he try and follow you? No, I don't think so. No. No, he wouldn't. No, did he did he hit you? I mean, thump you? I think he hit me on my head here. I, I don't know. I might have banged that against the wall or not. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I can just see a bruise, the bloody... Shall I get a doctor? No. Well, look, well, it might be... I don't want no doctor. Who the hell's that? Right, I don't want anybody coming in. No, it's only me. You're going to miss all the fun if you're not careful. Well, you've already missed Mrs. Walker's enforced retreat. <laughs> she got quite tipsy. Is something wrong? No, no, we've just, just been chattering, haven't we, love? Deirdre? <laughs> oh, Deirdre, love. <laughs> Deirdre, what's the matter, Ray? Oh, it's this bloke. She was coming over from Keep Fit classes just under viaduct. He... Well, he jumped at her. Oh, no, is she hurt in well, any I, way? I don't think so, no. It, she's more upset, you know. Oh, I think she is. Poor Deirdre, <coughs> is there anything I can do? Yeah, yeah, could you just look after her for a minute while I go and see the Tracy? Uh, of course I will. Oh, Deirdre, uh, is there anything I can do? Deirdre? No, it's all right. I'm all right. Are you sure that you're not injured in any way? No. Well, oh, that's something. Have the police been, Deirdre? We've not told the police. Oh, well, don't you think you should? No, I don't. Oh, but, Deirdre, you've been attacked. You could have been... Could have been what? 
was going to say murdered. Oh, he didn't want to murder me. Oh, no, it was something else he was after, wasn't it? You're not saying... He, he... tried. He tried. A filthy big try. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why Stanley here never suffers from an hangover, don't you? No, go on, tell me, then I'll know next time if there is a next time. Well, it's a mechanism in your head here, and it gets clogged up with the alcohol, see? It's like here, a watch spring that goes out of flunters, you know. Well, Stanley hasn't got any mechanism up here, have you, Stanley? You want <laughs> something, and I could do it too, mate or no, mate. Only a joke, mate, only a joke. Oh, while well, I remember, your Hilda was talking about going on about a washing machine or something last time she was in. Oh, aye. Only I've got one for sale, I've just bought a new one. But the old one's not in bad condition, if you're interested. I'm not interested. I don't like machines in the house. They go wrong and cost money. Money can be spent elsewhere. On points of bitter. Look, I've told you, haven't I? So you did, sorry. And what about the laundrettes? If they all had washing machines, they'd be out of business, wouldn't they? ta -da. He really is from Dark Ages, him, isn't he? Oh, he's from before Adam Stanley. Look, I'll not go in today, eh? I'm all right. You're all right, love. I'd like to see somebody who isn't. It might be better if you'd stop going on about it. It wasn't me who could hardly close their eyes all last night. Yeah, so I noticed. Look, love, if he didn't... If he didn't what? If he didn't hurt you. He didn't. Well, what's the flaming matter? Oh, no. I'm sorry. It must have been upsetting and terrifying. But he could do it again, couldn't he, dear? To somebody else, I mean. How should I know? Well, of course he could. I think we ought to tell the police. I mean, I'm not a member of old Bill's fan club. Not the way they've treated me in the past. But I think in this but, case... Ray, I'm not having the police. I've told you. I keep on telling you. All right, all right. But why not tell the police, love, if he... You keep saying if. If what? Why not tell the police? Because I don't want them asking me any questions, like they would. Questions about being thumped? I mean, it's not even that, is it? Questions about being jumped out of. Don't be thick, eh, Ray? You're not that thick. Well, what sort of questions, then? You know. No, I don't. Look, a woman is attacked late at night on her own. You know the sort of questions they'd ask. They'd have a ball, wouldn't they? So what? I just don't want them asking any questions. I still don't see why not, love. If he... Go on. If what? If what? I don't see why not. I want to forget about it. That's why not. I just want to forget about it. Gentlemen, mate. No, I'm not. I'm a tram driver. Because every time I move my head, it rattles just like I was driving a tram. Oh, man feels numb. That's it, numb. Even my feet are numb. I'm oh, well, oh, Hilda, put a sock in it, will you? Or a pair of Stan's long johns. Oh, by heck, have you two seen yourselves? You go out looking like that, or somebody will whip you after the casually clearing station. Oh, hello. Another zombie. Shut up, Hilda. Your obvious good health offends me. Oh, no constitution. That's your trouble. Do you know what I had last night before I went to bed? Sausage sandwich. Ooh. Two fried sausages on two big slices. Well, I socked up all the booze, didn't it, while I was asleep? <laughs> oh, Milda. Hey, talking of sausages, aren't you supposed to do the cleaning up round here? I have done. What's all this flipping lot, then? Sausages on sticks, bits of pie crust, soggy crisps. Oh, them should have been emptied last night. Not my responsibility. Ta-da! Well, I wish I'd never mentioned it. Oh. Me too, Fred. Me too. There you all are. What a loyal staff and a good son I've got. You know, I only just made it, Mrs Walker. I know exactly how you feel, Bet, dear, because I feel ten times worse. In fact, if you don't mind, I think I'll go off again for a couple of hours. I shall only be in the way here, shan't I? And, after all, if I can't cuss it myself when my son's at the helm, when can I? Feeling all right, are you, Billy dear? No. You won't die, you know. Just keep telling yourself that at frequent intervals. I do. Hey, Sunshine, if you're at the helm, mate, 
We're all in mortal flipping danger. I think he's in more danger. Why? Don't you think I look well? Mumsy, I wouldn't put it past her to stop in bed for rest at week, just to keep you here. You've got a funny colour now, love. Aren't he, Fred? No, I was pleasantly surprised myself. I mean, I didn't remember him being that handsome. A bit more like his mother, you mean? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> One jar enough for you, is it? Yes, I'll be getting a delivery tomorrow. Oh, it's a pity, that, really. I'm not selling much coffee at the moment. Price of it, I suppose. Ah, oh, probably. Yeah, I wonder why he's never married. Oh, Billy Walker. Mummy's boy? No, he can't be, can he? I mean, working away in Jersey. He certainly doesn't look like one. No, that's true, he doesn't. Oh, no. Crying shame, isn't it? Yeah. And he is me. And me. Not fair, is it? Well, life isn't. Do you want to get married? Well... Yes. Oh, I'm not so sure of myself. I mean, you see and hear so much to put you off, don't you? Well, I'd like to try and find out for myself. Like smoking your first fag? <laughs> Oh, I didn't like that either. I was sick for a week. Oh, I was sick for a month. <laughs> how much? Huh? At the coffee, how much? Oh, £2.40, please, then. Oh, no wonder you're not selling so much. That's Morning. All right, are you? After last night? Oh, recovering Hilda slowly. Now, look, what I've come in for is the advert in the window. Do you know who's selling that washing machine? Me. Oh. But it's no good asking me about it. Why? Well, your stands vetoed it. I told him about it this morning, and he reckons that the only machine he wants at home is you. Oh, he does, does he? Do you know, my stand's like a lot of folk. Lives half his life in a dream world, cos reality's too horrible to contemplate. <laughs> now, the reality in our house is that I wear the pants. Well, he's gonna find out when I get home and clobber him. <laughs> Where is this washing machine? It's, uh, it's in back. Can I have a look? Yeah, come on through. V told it, did he? <laughs> He'll be believing in equality between the sexes next. I put it all down to television, you know. <laughs> Perhaps we are better off single. <laughs> Perhaps we are. <laughs> ah, incredible, isn't it? You know, whenever I drink alcohol, in any quantities anyway, it leaves little pockets of gelignite throughout my entire system and they go on exploding at intervals for days. You know your mistake, don't you? I wish you'd tell us, Don. I'm as bad as can. In fact, I'm worse. I must be the only bloke in creation who feels completely disorientated after a couple of shandies. And what's the secrets, then? I've damaged your boozing, but whew, I'm not in your league. No, I thought you were. I thought I was back in your good books. No, nope. You don't sup enough. You only play at it. I mean, drinking's a serious business, you know. You've got to keep at it. It's like training for a football match or something like that. You must keep at it. And when you're match fit, <laughs> no danger. Yeah, well, they might well make it an event at the next Olympics, Stanley. And we all know who'd win a gold medal, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, bye. We don't often see you on your own in here at dinner time, Lord. Lord, please, bet. No girl's got the dentist. I should. Uh, it was a good do in here last night, wasn't it? Yes, it was, if I do say so <laughs> myself. Sir? Uh, Billy not in then. Um... Billy? Yeah. Billy Walker? Oh, I see. That's it, is it? Oh, no. That's what? Look, love. He'd have you on his cornflakes and not even notice. You're as bad as his mother, you know. I am 20. You never are, you. What experience you must have had. What sophistication. How oh, bold. Well <laughs> oh, I have drinks. Uh, no, I, I want to do some shopping and uh, I want to call in and see how Deirdre is. I wish she'd try and persuade her to go and see the police. I still think she should. In fact, I'm sure she should. Normally, I'd agree with you, but uh, I think I know how she feels. Well, me a man wouldn't. No, I don't think you would, love. Not in this case. It's... Well, it's very female. Oh. Oh, I don't suppose she could tell them much anyway. I mean, about her attacker. It's very dark under that fire, though. Yes. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hi. Hi. Thought I was a tally man, did you? I was just in the kitchen. Very nice. It's a different world from when Minnie Caldwell used to live here. Yeah, uh, Mike Baldwin yeah, did I know, it. I met him last night. 
Uh. Where were you last night? I had a headache. Oh. Is this Trace, is it? Yeah. No, no, Trace. How's Trace? Who's she supposed to look like? Langton. How is Langton? He's all right. How are you? All right. How did life suit you, does it? I'm still single. Oh, it didn't take you long to... You know, somehow I can't imagine Langton as a father. How's he cope, all right? Not bad. Well, I'd uh, just thought I'd pop in and see. When are you going back? Tomorrow, just a flying visit. Well, I'd better be off. Should I, uh... No, it's only me. It's Emily. Come in, Emily. Hello, Billy. Oh, uh, well, I'd better be going. Oh, well, don't let me No, no, I was going away. anyway, honest. Well, see you in the Rovers, maybe. Buy your drink. Uh, yeah. Get Trace some toffees or something, or stick it in a piggy bank. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Looks very well, doesn't he? Mm. Oh, Tracy. And how are you today? I'm all right. Did you manage to get any sleep? Yeah, some. Hey, listen, Emily, you haven't told anybody about last night, have you? Only Ernest. Well, I had to, Deirdre. He could see how upset I was when I got home. He won't go blabbing it about all over the place, will he? No, of course not. Though he did think you should go to the police. I'm not going to the police. No, well, I think I persuaded him that there were difficulties. I didn't tell him... Well, I, I just said you'd been assaulted. Actually, he made the point that it, it, it's not as if you could help the police, not as if you knew... Well, knew the man. Deirdre? I think I do know him. Hey, you are, Ellie. You get your stunt to change his vest every month now, instead of every six. Oh, don't be cheeky. Oh, isn't it lovely, eh? Looks well in here and all, doesn't it? Mm. Can I try it? Of course. Find some dirty washing. Oh, that's no problem. <laughs> oh, how long has that lot been there? Well, not been very good drying weather, has it? Gosh, shove it in. Yeah. Hilda, how much, uh, how much do you pay for this thing? 20 quid. Oh, I heard she'd take 10. You never. No. Hello. What? There's a quid. I'm skinned. Come in here. Listen, all I wanted... That's Stanley. What's that? That, Stanley, is a washing machine. What other housewives have had for years and years. Still, everything comes to her what waits. Well, nearly everything. Did you get it given? No. How much? It's all right, Stan. I've paid for it. You've no need to have a heart attack. But I haven't paid Ray here for putting it in. I've left that for you to do. How much? 18 quid, Stan. 18 quid? 18 quid! Can I switch it on? Three, a two, a one, zero! Oh, just fancy that. My own washing machine. My mother would never believe it. I don't think Stan can, neither. Late, eh? All right. Bacon will go streaky, you know, moor it. Yeah, all right. No need to rub it in. I want the feed in your house. Monkey's missus only gets white sliced bread. Well, you won't have a word with her. I have. I told her. Man doth not live on bread alone. No. So now she gets muffins. Eh? Morning. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. O. Just uh, lift your flight and mug up, Oh, wait, love, Finnish, can't you? Time and a very hot wash. Wait for no man, Chuck. Thank you. What's, uh... We've got a washer. What, that one really was flogging? She can't dodge about it. Anything that doesn't move goes in. You taking my washer's name in vain, Stan. 
Well, it didn't need it. We've done 30 years without it. I've been without a proper fella for 30 years, but that's not to say I wouldn't have one if one came on the market. Oh, that was very cruel, Stanley. That was under the belt, that was. Cost me a fortune. 18 quid to plumb it in. It'll put years on my life. That's another reason why I shouldn't have got it. I heard that, Stanley Ogden. You're dancing with death there, mate. Listen, I think I'll go and have a gander at this miracle of technology. Ah, but watch it, otherwise I get a double rinse. Well, where is this infernal machine, then? I think it's a bit strong, you know, Mrs O, charging 10 a go to view. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Benny? Very nice. Very nice. Nice? It's beautiful. Do you know, I feel as though I've moved into the 20th century at last. You know you won't wash in, have you? Me? No, no, I haven't. Oh, you have, you know. You definitely have. I haven't. I had clean on me last week. Oh. Clean vest, clean underpants. Give us me half back. Oh, no, you don't. I'll bet you've not had that wash since you got it. I'll bet it's a different colour when it's clean. You're not supposed to wash hats. Ah, stand by your beds. Three, two, one. Blast off. I hope my hat's all right in there. Oh, it'll think it's its birthday. Just off, love. Right, love. Have a good day. Come on, Emily, love. Buck up. I know you're worried, but it's not our problem. It's theirs. Dearies and Rays. Yes. There's something you've not told me, isn't there? No. Oh, yes, there is. I know there is. Look, I know you were awake half the night. Now, what is it? I'm not going to work until you tell me. I mean that. Deirdre knows who it was who attacked her. She knows? She thinks so, yes. And she's not been to the police? She knows who it was tried to rape her and she's not been to the police? No. Well, she must, Emily, she must. I mean, all right, I know I went along with her when she didn't want to tell because I didn't think it would do any good. I didn't think she could help the police. But now, I'm oh, sorry, she must, Emily, she must. She won't, Ernest. I spent an hour yesterday trying to persuade her. She won't be budged. All right, then I'll tell them myself. Ernest. I mean it, Emily. It's our duty. But it would be breaking a confidence. It's our duty, Emily. Suppose he attacks somebody else. Do you want any errands, love? Corner shop, butchers? No, I don't need anything. Hey. What was that for? Well, I know I'm only a thick bloke, but I'm not that thick, love. It must have been... well, i had been pretty upset if it had happened to me. Still, it just goes to prove, doesn't it? What? All them do-gooders, you know, them as want to send thugs and criminals to the edge shrinkers, instead of stringing them up. Cos that's what I'd do, you know, I'd string them up. <laughs> you might not be standing here now, love, if everybody thought like that. Yeah, but I never attacked a woman, did I? All I did was... well, I used to nick a few things. Didn't you ever nick things when you were a kid? Yeah, once. Pinched a pair of knickers out my mate's desk. Ah, oh, they were very frilly and brief. My mum had never let me have anything like that. Well, there you are, then. Oh, I never attacked a woman. Fellas that do that, they're bloody animals. Still... What? Well, it could have been worse, couldn't it? Oh, I'm not saying it wasn't a bad experience, love, especially for a woman, but it could have been worse if... Well, you know, if he'd... Any old, we can forget about it now, can't we? Deirdre? Yeah. That is what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Cos I do. I, I know I felt like doing for him at the time, and I would have done if I'd nabbed him, but I didn't, so... You know, it's best we forget it and put it behind us. Love? Yeah. You can still see a doctor, you know, if you want no, for a tonic I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes, will you stop going on about it? All right, well, I'm off then. Um, you sure you don't want nothing fetching? No. You'll see. This time next week, you'll be wondering what you made all fuss about. Yeah. Kenneth, darling, we cannot keep meeting like this. Oh, well, how about the red wreck? Nine o'clock. You'll bring your mac in case the grass is wet? I never get caught in without one. You're on. Now, what do you want? Advice. Young Carol Spencer, you know, used to live near you on Victoria Street. Little, dark, flighty piece. That's the one. 
Has she got a father? Well, she had yesterday. I saw him downtown. I suspected as much. I said I was going to have a word with him about her behaviour. She told me this harrowing story about how he'd been killed in a car accident and if I went and upset her mother, she'd probably commit suicide. Sounds like Carol does that. You're a devious lot, aren't you? Slippery as eels. We have to be to survive in this harsh, cruel man's world. <laughs> not anymore, it's not. Not anymore. <laughs> Was that Kenneth? Yeah, an early bird for him, I mean. Yes, he just came across to ask my opinion about something. He often pops across to ask me my opinion. Thinks a lot about my opinion, does Kenneth? Really? You sure it's your opinion? Mrs. Walker, you just made a funny. Well, I'm not entirely without wit, you know, even rather a vulgar wit sometimes. After all, we have worked together for a great number of years. There you go again. Speaking of opinions, though, do you happen to know what Billy's plans are? Billy's plans for today, you mean? No, for the future. He hasn't actually said he's going back to Jersey, and I have been hoping that perhaps home comforts would induce him to stay. He hasn't said anything to you, has he? No, Mrs. Walker, he hasn't. I think he might stay. I've got a feeling. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, dear. Hello! I've got no flame in trouble, Miguel. I'm starving. Oh, you're not so going on with that flame thing, are you? Oh, you just can't see it with my eyes, can you? Well, hardly, no. No. I mean, that's not just a wonder of modern science to me, you know. Oh, no. No, it synthesises our release from bondage. Now, by our, I mean us women. Because, you see, Stan, for years, science was only for you fellas. With motor cars and tanks and aeroplanes and all them sort of things. One of the few things fellas ever invented for women was typewriters. Then they went and chained millions of women to them. <laughs> But the minute we started getting a bit of money of our own through working like, then they started inventing things for us to buy. Like washers and washing up machines and freezers and that. But what they didn't realise was they was giving us our freedom. Oh, yes, Stanley. Things are going to change around here. I've tasted technology and I must say it tastes very good. Maybe it's like me. He can't stand the sound of your flipping voice. I'm going to roll with her a pint. Aww. Oh, flaming thing! Hello. Hello. Could I have a word? Well, I'm just having my tea. Oh, come on, then. That was Deirdre I just saw disappearing round the rover's corner, wasn't it? Deirdre's upstairs having to lie down. Tracy nodded off so she thought she'd take advantage like, you know. Oh. Well, what was it you wanted to have a word about? Well, it's rather, well, embarrassing. You, you see, I, I thought Deirdre wasn't in. I thought she'd gone out. Well, she'll not stir, will she? She's not been sleeping very well at night since, you know. No, I don't suppose she has. Well, was it something you didn't want Deirdre to hear? Well... Well, come on through. Look, Emily, if it's about the other night, well, we've agreed, both of us, to forget about it. It's no use keep mulling it over, you know, especially for her. And, well, it's not as if she was badly hurt, so we think it's best to forget it, all right? I, I understand all that, Ray. Really, I do, but... Uh, but what? Well, I know I'm breaking a confidence. It's something I would never do normally, not in a million years. Emily, will you get to the flaming point? Deirdre knows who her attacker was. She what? Oh, that's ridiculous. She'd have said. Oh, she told me she did. At least she thinks she did. I don't believe that. You're making it up. She told me. Oh, she's making it up then. It's probably the shock of summer. It's a funny thing to make up, Ray, if she wants to forget the whole thing, like you say she does. I mean, inventing an actual person. I should have thought that that would aggravate things, bring it all back in her mind. Well, why are you telling me all this? Well... If she knows, there's no excuse now for not telling the police, is there? I mean, not if she can identify him. It's her duty to tell them. You try telling her that. Oh, I know how she feels. I really do. Oh, do you? 
You ever been attacked? No, I haven't, Ray. I'm glad to say. Oh, look, Emily, will you just leave it to me and I'll talk to her? Yes, of course. Is she... How is she today? Well, she's not too bad, actually. Oh, good. I'm very pleased. Well, I'll be off. I'm, I'm sorry yeah. to... to... After you. Thank you very much. How are you? Oh, I'm uh, fine. Uh, you? Oh, oh, I'm sorry I've been so long. Only I was putting a new toilet roll on, and it's something you can't start once you've started, isn't it? You've just ruined a magical moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Shall I go out and come in again? It's all right, Rini. It's only teasing. She was just going to tell me why she loves me, weren't you? Oh, <laughs> shall I tell you why I love you? Go on. Because she's only fell in this shop. Wonderful. You first, Mavis. May I call you Mavis? <laughs> yes, but it's all right. You go first. <laughs> oh, a uh, box of chocolates. Bigger. Oh, you shouldn't. It's for me, Mum. Well, I haven't really got any big ones. Uh, the biggest you got. Well, will this do? Oh, fine. I'm just on. One fifty, please, Mum. All right. Uh, oh, there we are. Ta-da. Ta Thanks. Ta-da. Oh, well, I can't get out of for you. Oh. <laughs> but what a will I have is a jar of coffee, please. I'll supply it. Hey, to... you! That flipping washer, you've sold me a flaming dud. Hilda, I like my customers to keep a civil tongue in their head, even you. It's stopped, I tell you. Conked out, come to a shuddering halt. Rumour hath it that you've been washing three-piece sweets in it. Just the loose covers, just the loose covers. Any road, shouldn't have conked out after only one day. What are you telling me for? I'm not a mechanic. Well, I want you to give me my money back. Well, I don't see why I should. It was in perfect condition when I sold it to you. I'm under no obligation, am I, Mavis? Well, I shouldn't think so, no. Oh, well, of course, you're bound to be on her side, aren't you? I mean, you're both in business. Now, look, I know my rights. I've heard all about this fair trading chap. I'll listen to the Jimmy Young... Hold! Now, listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. You get a mechanic, and if he says there were a fault in it when I sold it to you, then go on, then I'll pay for repairs. No, I can't say fairer than that. Oh, I think that sounds very fair. All right, then. But no wriggling out of it, even if it costs you a bomb. Do you think it will? Oh, it could do. We've had a visitor. What visitor? Who? Emily Bishop. What does she want? She reckons that you knew who the bloke were. Do you? She got no business telling you that. That were a... Well, I told her that in confidence. Yeah. Something you couldn't tell me in confidence, obviously. Do you know who it were? I think I do. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because I, I only think I do. Who is he? Look, Ray, I've told you, I only think I know who it is. Who is he? What will you do if I tell you? No bloody prizes for guessing. Look, if you go and thump him and I'm wrong, then you're in trouble, aren't you? You're in trouble if, I, if I'm right and all, because uh, then the police will get involved and then I'll be in trouble. I don't want the police involved, Ray. I don't. Do you know why I think you didn't tell me? Why you don't want the police involved? Just forget it, Ray. Because he did more than you let on, didn't he? Please! Didn't he, Deirdre? He only tried. Honest? Honest. Well, why? Why all the fuss? Why all this fuss, love? Because it doesn't matter if he only tried, does it? Of course it does. No, it doesn't. I still feel... dirty. I still feel mauled. I've never been... touched before. Oh, yeah, there's... there's been fellows in the park and on the bus and that. I've never been... Touch. Deirdre. Folk will think I'm dirty too. That's ridiculous. Is it? Yes. Look, how many times have you tried to ask me what happened and you, you couldn't, could I you? I asked you just now. Only because you thought you knew. You don't really want to know the truth, do you? I mean, even when you asked me and I told you, you still weren't convinced, were you? You, my own husband. <laughs> so if, if folk do find out about it, and the police get involved and I go to court, I can swear till I'm blue in the face that he only tried, but you know what folk will say, don't you? Oh, yeah. Who's she trying to kid? And anyway, it's no more than she deserves wandering the streets on her own at that time of night. 
Do you want folks saying that sort of thing about your wife? You don't, do you? And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Just seems to be taking you a long time. You want a proper job doing or what? Oh, well, of course I do. Because I do a proper job. I'm not one of your cowboys, I do a proper job. But it takes time. Yeah, sorry. I, um, I wondered if it might be bits of this, like, you know, clogging it up. Your husband a soccer hooligan, is he? Pardon? Wearing anything like that? Oh, uh, no, it belongs to a friend. I should be very careful of him, missus. Very careful. Albert! No fighting people on the table! I'll be better off in Doss House. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> we can't all be lucky. Look, I'm fed up with... Who's this? Oh, it's the washing machine mechanic, Stan. Uh, engineer. Appliance engineer, to give me my correct title. He's the appliance engineer, Chuck. And I'm not one of your cowboys, either. Don't tell me it's bust, isn't it? Second day, and it's bust. I'm not surprised it never stopped. Two o'clock in the morning she'll be using it. Oh, very bad, that. Machinery needs a rest just like we do. Otherwise, you'd have your perpetual motion, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you would. <laughs> What's wrong with it, any road? I'm glad you asked me that, because I've just found out. There's the culprit. Stuck in the pump, it was. The little devil. Oh. Look at that, Stan, a button. Oh, and there's me been worrying myself sick, thinking it mightn't get better. Very expensive button, away, eh, missus? How do you mean? Ah, well, you see, Chuck, um, Mr Brown charges six quid just for turning out. Uh, that's his minimum charge, like six quid, you know, whatever the trouble is, even if uh, it's only a button. Thinking of charging six fifty next week. You know the conclusion I've come to, mate? For every labour-saving device a wife gets, her husband has to graft that bit more to pay for it. What did I say? What did I say? Sure you won't change your mind, eh? Just a meal and a drink now, Anky Panky. I'm lonely, Ben. Sorry. Well, I thought you said I was back in your good books. So you are, but I also said not to read too much into it. Do you know what I reckon? I think you're scared to come out with me. Scared for you, love. I mean, if I went out with you and you did try any Anky Panky, I'd have to turn your nose inside out, wouldn't I? Scared for you. Come on, Birchill, time to get back. Birchill! What? Come on. Bayek, she's in a trance. You know he's going back today, don't you? He's not, is he? Who are you talking about? Billy Walker. She's potty about him, though it's not reciprocated. How do you know it's not? You've hardly spoken two words to him. <laughs> he's old enough to be your father. Mm, so were you to that girl I saw you downtown with till the night? I was interviewing her for a job, honest. Lonely? Come on, you. Just a sec. Excuse me, Billy. Yeah. Uh, I believe you're going back. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's been nice meeting you. And uh, you won't forget about that job you promised me in Jersey, will you? No, no, of course I won't. Thanks. Ta-ra. Hey, ta-ra. It was me you promised a job in Jersey, too. Oh, let's put it this way, Fred. If there's only one job and it's between you and her, you'd be silly checking the playing times, wouldn't you? Thanks. Got a minute, lunch. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's a cruel world, Frederick. Next time I come down here, I'm coming as a woman. Yeah, but supposing you look like you. Oh, no, no's out there, <laughs> I suppose I've known all along that you couldn't stay long, but I did hope perhaps, well, a week. Yes. Anyway, thanks for the chocolates. Mum, I've got to get back to my oh, job. Of course you have, dear. It's just... No, I promised myself I would not complain. You've got your own life. It's just what? Well, you will come back to stay one day, won't you, love? I was hoping the opposite might happen. The opposite? Thought you might come out and stay with me. Oh, oh. you looking after your old mum. Unless. Unless what? There's a girl. You know, I've had one or two offers since I've been back here. I'm serious. No, there's not a girl, mum. Still a bachelor at your age. Look, I demand compensation. In fact, I insist on it. Did <laughs> you hear that, Stan? Says he wants compensation. Tell him, Chuck. Tell him the state of our finances. Non existent, mate. You must have something. Enough for to buy me a new hat, anyway. Did you buy that? Well, not exactly, no. Mm. Stolen property. You ought to thank your lucky stars. I have ruined it. Well, look, uh, what about a contribution? Say a quid. Oh. Eddie, do you know how that's cost me already? 18 quid and 6 quid. 24 quid. And worth every penny? And that's not all. The fellow that came to repair it said it was so old he might as well stay here as a lodger. But not for the next fortnight. 
Because he's going on a cruise. A cruise! You can practically see your face in these ankies. That flaming thing will bankrupt me. And just look at them towels. Like new. Just like we used to get in Blackpool in the boarding houses. Stan. What? Your missus seems to be fairly hooked on this washing machine. Oh, she can't bar me, am it? Well, why don't we harness this unbridled enthusiasm and earn a few, Bob? Oh. By getting it to take in washing. Damn good idea. Thought you'd like it. Now, see, you'd think I'd only bought this vest yesterday instead of last year. Did you say something? Some liver for your tea. There was some in the fridge. Great. Are you all right? Yeah, of course. There's something wrong, isn't there, Ray? Ray? Here, read that. Bottom of the page. What? Bottom of the page, left hand side. Man accused yeah, of. Yeah, that's it. Not the block. Yeah. Makes an habit of it, doesn't he? He must have done it straight after he attacked me. Or before. It could have been before. Yeah, but if it was after... I know what you're thinking, Ray. If I'd gone to the police, this wouldn't have... Well, it wouldn't, would it? It could have been before. She must have been braver than me. Somebody made a go were braver than me. Do you want some bread with your liver? Well, I wouldn't be asked in the first place, would I? Mm. You're no help at all, you. Uh, and you shouldn't be sat there stuffing your guts with biscuits. You should be out on your own. I'm on me break. Look, you went out of here at half past nine. Ten past ten, you were back in again shouting for me to put the kettle on. I'll give it a rest, woman, will you? Rest? It's now but flaming rest for you. Rest, rest, rest till I'm sick. You haven't been sitting up and down that ladder, have you? You've been sitting there all morning. I have not. I've been working. Well, working with my brain box, any road. I'm trying to win us his and her spring outfits in this fashion contest. Them contest is no good. You want to try pools? I think I'll do the pools this week. I've got a feeling, you know. We should get a feeling for work. Look, why don't you go out and do some, Stan? I'm only waiting for the washing machine to switch itself off. No, nah, and that's a waste of money too. Cost a fortune. It'll always break down, no danger. It's not a waste of money, it's an investment. An investment's supposed to bring money in. That's always paying money out. Oh, we're not open yet, love. Not for another ten minutes. Oh, good morning. I'm not a customer. I'm looking for Mrs Ann Walker. Have I come to the right place? Well, you have, but she's out, I'm afraid. She's gone shopping. Oh. But we're expecting her back. She could walk in any minute. I don't want to miss her. Well... Is there anything I could do? I mean, is it business? Well, it's personal business, sir. As a matter of fact, uh, Mrs Walker and I are... Well, it's a bit of old lang syne, really. Look, can I wait? Of course you can, mate. We'll be open in ten minutes. You can wait with a pint in your hand, then. Oh, that's a splendid idea. Well, or, if you like, you can wait in Mrs Walker's sitting room. You sure she won't mind? Oh, I'm sure she won't, Cock. Come on through. Oh, thank you. Shift, Fred. What's to do? Uh, through here, is it? Yes, it is, love. Thank you, dear. Through there. Don't worry, Fred. It's all right. He's one of Mrs. Walker's posh pals, isn't he? She'd have played hell if we'd have left him kicking his heels in public bar. So I've sat him down, stuck one of her magazines in his mitts, and it's all right. Anyway, I'm going to keep my eye on him. You never know, do you? You know about his sort. He's what they call a cut above, isn't he? I wonder who he is. Search me. Washing. Washing? Who's flaming what? Hey, you haven't pinched it. Have I uh, pinched it? Well, what are you doing with it, then? All right, hang on, hang on, I'll tell you. You see, on the round, I happen to uh, mention it. Mention what? 
the washing machine, like, and, and how good you were with it, you see, and two women towards the street said, uh, right-o. What did they say, right-o too, Chuck? Laundry, you know. I thought we'd sit that machine standing there all day, practically, doing that. You want me to take him washing, is that what you're saying? It's a pound a time. It's good money. Now, how many of those per week can you do, do you think? None! That's how many I can flame him do! Look, it doesn't worry me, the washing machine, standing there all week doing that. Not one little bit. Cos I'm not used to you standing there all week doing that. Oh, he'll do chuck. Don't you will do chuck me. You'd have me sweating away, wouldn't you? Slaving and drudging from cock shout till midnight while you rake the money in. Well, it's not coming off. I've taken orders now. What, what am I going to tell them? Well, I'd look. Cos if I'd wanted to do other women's washing, I'd have married a flipping Chinaman, wouldn't I? Oh, Hilda. Get out! Oh. Is that it then, Mr Tatlock? It'll have to be with what I've got to spend. Yeah, well, that's uh, 54 pence, please, then. Wicked, isn't it? Price things are these days absolutely wicked. Mm, don't blame me, Mr T What's this? That, that's a pound note, that is. There's no wrong with it. It's only just a Scottish one. It's worth just as much as an English pound note. Practically nothing, eh? Huh? Well, well, if you don't want it, you'll give it me back and no, you'll have these back. Don't get your cons in a twist now. I'm not grumbling about it. I'm only looking at it. You don't see many of these round here. No, it's good enough for bank. It's good enough for me. What's he causing trouble about now? Oh, flashing Scottish pound notes about. Oh, souvenir of Glasgow, eh? When did you get back? Last night. Oh, and how's little Susan and Peter? You've not met Susan, have you? Ken's daughter. No. Oh, well, they're doing very well, both of them. I'm thinking about going up there again at Christmas. Now, that's a dirty word, Albert Christmas. I don't think I'm ready to contemplate it yet. Hey, it'll soon be here. It's November tomorrow. I know it's coming, and I know there's nought we can do to stop it, but I don't think I can afford to pay for it. <laughs> you know nought, you lot. Wait till you get to be a pensioner like me, and then you'll find out. How do you think I manage? Well, I know it must be tough, Al, but we are getting a rise shortly, aren't you? Such as it is. Well, cheer up, then. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, Mr Tatlock, yeah. you needn't buy me a present this year. Present? That's another dirty word. The minute you mention Christmas, one thing piles on top of another. You know, them two lodgers of mine, they keep dropping dirty big hints about what they want already. <laughs> Do you know, there seems to be only me around here that actually likes Christmas. Good for trade, you know. Oh! By the way, Mr Tatlock, uh, would you like to join my rum club? Or whiskey club, or wine club, whichever your tipple is. You what? Well, you know, you pay so much a week, and then at Christmas you've got a bottle of rum paid for. Not likely. There's no sense in me buying out in advance. Not at my age, not even a bottle of rum. I might not be here to sup it. <laughs> Mrs Walker, you've had a visitor. Oh, who was it? I don't know, but I put him in your sitting room. Oh, really, Bet? Was that wise? Didn't you even ask his name and find out what his business was first? Well, all I know is it's not business and he knows you. Well, I'm not expecting anyone. No idea who it can be. Hmm. Just better see. Yes? Um, how are you? You have the advantage of me, I'm afraid, Mr. Uh... Well, it's been a long, long time. I can't really blame you for not recognising me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Norman. I'm so good at faces, but... The last time we met was in very different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Clitheroe? Clitheroe? And you weren't Mrs. Anne Walker, then. You were Miss Anne Beaumont. Just a moment. It can't be. Cousin Charles? It is, isn't it? <laughs> Cousin Charles! <laughs> I knew you'd remember. Charles Beaumont at your service. What a surprise. How long has it been? Oh, Charles, I'm delighted, simply delighted. No more than I am. You look wonderful, and you oh. really do, and as charming as ever. Oh, how nice of you to say so. Do you know, it must be all of 40 years or more. Well, I would have recognised you anywhere. You have scarcely changed at all. It must be that wonderful complexion. Oh, oh, flatterer. But forgive me, I'm being very remiss. What would you say to a glass of sherry? Oh, I'd love it. You know, I call this a very special occasion. So much has happened since we last met. I hardly know where to begin. Oh, a great deal of water has flowed under a great many bridges, Anne. Oh, it has indeed. It has indeed. May I propose a toast? But of course. The Beaumonts. 
the Belmonts. What is it, I guess? Yeah. Hey, Fred, I've cracked it. You never guess who he is, though. What's she on about now? <coughs> it's a bloke come to see Mrs. Walker this morning. Oh, yeah. Bit of a mystery, man. Mystery solved. It's only one of her posh relations, isn't it? One of your actual Beaumonts of Clitheroe. Get away. Oh. I never believed they actually existed. You know, I thought they were like these little green men from Mars. Everybody talks about them, but nobody sees them. Hey, what's it look like? Has he got a gold coronet and a long robe trimmed with ermine? Yeah, a chap with a military bearing. Is he exuding the quiet air of authority acquired over years? of command. Well, he looks posh in a sideways sort of way. A very nice suit, not new, but immaculate shoes. Definitely a touch of the officer's mess. Well, I can't wait to clap eyes on him. You know, I've heard so much about these flaming bowments over the years. God's gift to Britain, according to Annie. <laughs> yes, sir, yes. The name's Pritchard. Oh, right. I'm from Alley Wells. Oh, yeah. You know, loving cup. <laughs> well, if it's an order, you'll have, to, you'll have to wait and see the boss. Oh, no, no, it's about our competition. All right. You shouldn't still be showing that, you know. The contest has been closed for some time now. Oh, we better chuck it out then, have we, love? Oh, oh, I'm not grumbling. No, it's all good for the product. As, as I was saying, I'm from the Public Relations Department and I'm here in connection with the Loving Couples Contest. Yeah, I nearly went in for that, you know, but I couldn't think of anybody. Cynic. <laughs> you blame me. <laughs> well, somebody thought of them. A couple who use this pub have won a prize. A oh, couple from it. here? Oh, it must be Rain, Deirdre. Yeah. Well, it could be Emily and Ernie. What's the name, Bishop? Uh, no. Mr. and Mrs. Stanley Ogden. The Yogis? <laughs> Six rules for a happy marriage. Now I have heard everything. <laughs> the Yogis, I can't credit it. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> 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 dance at the town hall. That was the last time we met. My word, they were dances. The social event of the year in those days. Oh, <laughs> things are very different now. Mind you, I can remember it as it was yesterday. Do you know, I can still hear my mother saying, look at Anne. She's the belle of the ball and no mistake. Oh, your mother, dear Aunt Maud, she's always so kind to me. Oh, she thought the world of you, Anne. Do you know, she talked about you right up to the end. 20 years ago. Yes, it is. It's 20 years next July. I suppose you know that poor uh, Cousin Alice passed on. Yes, I, uh, I heard. As a matter of fact, it was her son who told me where you were living. Arthur? Mm. Not seen him for years. How is he? Oh, he's still on the farm as far as I know. Mind you, I haven't seen him. But I dropped him a note when I heard about Alice and uh, he wrote back and said, you were still in Lancashire. So, uh, when I came north, I resolved to look you up. I'm so glad you did. Well, one does wonder if one is imposing. My dear Charles, I can't imagine you ever imposing on anyone. Tell me about yourself, though. You were studying chartered accountancy, wasn't it? Yes, but the war knocked all that on the head. I served in the Navy, you know. Oh. Then I knocked about the world for a few years. Restless, I suppose. Eventually settled in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Went into the insurance. Ah. Uh, Launched my own little company, as a matter of fact. Marine insurance, mostly. I must say, I can't help thinking that you seem to have been out there in the mainstream of things while I've spent my life up here in this tiny backwater. Now, there I would give you an argument. As a matter of fact, I'm up here house hunting. Coming back north? Well, I'm scouting round. I booked myself into the Midland for a few days and... We shall see what we shall see. You like a flaming great locust, you? It's munch, munch, munch from morning to night. And where's the dress to come from? I'll it? get me dinner in the roll. Yeah, well, I've had a sigma. You can clear off and find somebody else to be a mug for you, cos I've had enough. Hey, uh, Elder. What? Plenty of quid, will you? Mr and Mrs Ogden. Who's asking? Uh, my name's Pritchard and I... We I've don't come... want none. <laughs> no, I'm not selling anything. I've, I've something to tell you, something to your advantage. Tell us what to our advantage. He's trying to get his foot in the door, can't you see? No, no, I'm serious. Oh. Oh, well, you better come in, then. Go on, you clear off. I'll deal with this. But it concerns both of you, you and Mr. Upton. Oh, in that case, come in, lad. Oh, thank you. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's, uh, it's not a trick, is it? I mean, saying it's somewhat to our advantage and then trying to flog us something. Uh, not at all, no. It's not them in the encyclopedia, is it? Cos if it is, we don't want to know. No, no, I'm from Halliwell's. You know, we make Loving Cup, the new together drink for Britain's young moderns. Oh, yeah, 
Hey, I went in for a competition to do with them. Happy marriage, as it were called. You had to put six rules for happy marriage. Shut sure up, will you? Let him finish. Rules will be short. Don't you tell me to shut sure up. Uh, actually, that's why I'm here, because of the competition. Oh. I'm happy to tell you that you're among our lucky winners. I've won. I've won a prize. I'm happy to inform you that you've actually the won... The Caribbean Cruise, that was the first prize. Blimey. Uh, sorry, no, you've not won the first prize. Oh. Oh, well, well, second, then. Second. Uh, uh, weekend in Paris. Not the second prize, either, I'm afraid. Consolation prize. I bought the flaming loving cup. I'll sub three of them. I'll reel for a week. What, uh, what exactly have I won? Well, subject to scrutiny, you have, in fact, won the third prize. A second honeymoon night in the bridal suite of a five-star hotel. Eh? Hey? Second honeymoon? Oh, Stan, what do you think about that? Not much. That's not much of a prize, is it? Oh, I think it's marvellous. Second honeymoon in a posh hotel. The prize also includes a cash sum of £25 for spending money. Why didn't you say so before? Look, I'm slightly worried about one thing. The theme of the contest, as you know, was loving couples, a play on the name of the product. Now, I'm not quite sure how to put this, but we did hope that contestants would be, well, loving couples themselves. What are you getting at? Well, we have to protect the name of our product. I mean, you must see that. And if the prize winners weren't genuinely what happy... What do you mean? Well, when I arrived, there seemed to be some domestic friction. Oh! Oh, that! Oh, that was just a, a lover's tiff, weren't it, Stan? <laughs> yes, my love. <laughs> no, what it was, you see. Um, are you married by any chance? No, I'm not, no. No, I thought you couldn't be, else you'd have known. Still, you're only a lad, really, aren't you? <laughs> no, you see, I was ticking Stan off because, uh, well, well, he has this trouble, you see. Oh, what, what trouble's that? Well, with his weight. I mean, you can see, can't you? <laughs> and then he's got this very good appetite as well. That comes from working out of doors in the fresh air all day long. So, uh, so when he tries to eat too much, I have to be very firm with him. Don't I, love? Uh, yes, love, yes. yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, I've great pleasure in confirming that the prize is yours. You know, Anne, it really is very good of you giving me lunch like this. Especially as you must have a great many calls on your time and attention running this place. It's my pleasure. Anyway, my staff are perfectly capable of coping, although they do do their best to make me feel I'm indispensable. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> You've got to keep the staff in place, otherwise you end up working for them. That's exactly mm. what it is. Oh, I must say, having lunch like this is a great treat. Especially when an old bachelor really enjoys a woman's hand at the table. Why have you never married, Charles? Well, I'm no misogynist, but uh, I suppose the reason I've never married was that I never found the right woman. And I suppose I have inherited enough of the Beaumont wit to prevent me marrying the wrong one. The Beaumonts never let their hearts rule their heads. <laughs> I was lucky, of course. I had a wonderful marriage. Never met yet, did you? Do you know, I don't believe I ever did. You certainly weren't married the last time we met. You had plenty of admirers, I remember that. Have you uh, got children, Anne? Two. Joan is married, living in Derby, doing very, very well. And then there's my son, Billy, of course. Oh, is he around? I'd like to meet him. Uh, I'm afraid he's pretty well settled in Jersey these days. Jersey, eh? Oh, well, that is the place to be. Oh, what's he do? Small business there, catering. He's doing very well also. I never know when he's going to hop on a plane and descend on me out of the blue. You know, I think that is one thing I do regret, not having children. Especially these last few years. I mean, here one is one's built up a thriving little business, no flesh and blood of one's own to leave it to. Yeah, that must be very disappointing. Well, it makes you wonder what all the striving's for. Mm. Still, I suppose the government will get it all in the end anyway. Come in. It's only me, Mrs Walker. Oh. I've got the doings. Now, wine's from Germany, I think. This salmon's Japanese. Just shows you won't last war, do not it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you met Bear this morning, didn't you, Charles? Not formally. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Bear, dear, this is my cousin, Charles Beaumont. How do you do, once again? Honoured, I'm sure. I can't stop and chat to you, cock. They're banging the pipe pots and yelling for ale next door. <laughs> Something of a rough diamond, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm sure she glitters brightly enough in her own setting. <laughs> well, this looks very splendid. 
I must say, Anne, you really are looking after me. Oh, right. I'm afraid um, this afternoon and this evening I'm rather committed. I'm uh, house hunting in Tarpoli. But uh, it would give me enormous pleasure if you would dine with me tomorrow evening. I'd love to. Good, that's settled then. So what are yours, love? I'm just not very hungry. What are you eating for me? Yeah. What are you going to have? I'll get some in later. I'll tell you what. I'll get Emily round to sit for us tonight. And we'll have an hour down the rovers. A few laughs, a few drinks, do you the world of good. What you say? I don't want to go in the rovers, Ray. All right. So you stop in, I'll go on my own. I'll get nicely flaming kettled. Ray. What? Don't I? Don't what? Don't leave me on my own. Don't go. Don't go in the rovers, please. Don't leave me on my own. All right, love. Okay, okay. I'll stop with you. But Deirdre, you're safe, you know, love. Nobody's going to hurt you. You're going to have to snap out of this sometime. You should start trying. You should book yourself up. I can't. <laughs> Did that fella from the Loving Cup Company find you? Oh, yeah, he found us all right, didn't he, Stan? All right. Uh, point of bill, please. I'm a lighter. No, no, I'll have a drop of port, seeing as I was celebrating. Uh, well, come on, don't keep us in suspense. What have you won? Is it that Caribbean cruise? Is it that? Weekend in Paris, then? No. Oh, come on, tell us. We all know you've won some it. I'm not telling you. There's no need to be shy about it. As a matter of fact, we have won a second honeymoon. You're joking. Of course she is. Aren't you? No, I'm not. You get £25 in cash and the best suite in the poshest hotel for miles around. It's a second honeymoon for two. Fair. Well, they're always the best, aren't they? Do you think that's wise, Ilda? I mean, Stan doesn't look as though he's fully recovered from first. You've never had an honeymoon, so you don't know now about it. Hey, Stan. These honeymoon capers are no good to you, you know. I mean, on the first one, you don't know what to do. And on the second one, you know what to do, but you can't. <laughs> Shut up, will you? The love of you. Take no notice, Stanley. I knew some folk had tried to be lewd. Now, see, we'd be living like kings in this hotel. Bathroom, bedroom, all you could want. How many nights is it going to be, Hilda, this second honeymoon? Oh, just the one. It's just as well, Hilda. In Stan's case, two nights would kill him. <laughs> I said, sure up. <laughs> Look, it might only be the one night, but it'll be a night none of you will ever get the chance of. VIP treatment, that's what we'll be getting. <laughs> Flunkies and everything. Well, tell me something, Hilda. How the hell did you win a prize for the perfect marriage? Ah, oh, well, you see, I had to put the six ingredients for happy marriage in the right order and then supply an extra. My tip for happy marriage is in not more than 15 words. Well, come on, what's your tip? Let us into the secret. Well, it's too late to do you much good, isn't oh, no. it? I know what it was. <laughs> Never let your husband see you in curlers. No, it weren't. Mind you, I did think of that. No, no, what I said Don't was... Don't tell him. I'm not ashamed of it. What I said was, be a mistress as well as a wife and your husband will still be your boyfriend. I'm <laughs> kidding, of course. No, I'm not. I told you not to tell him. I don't fancy this hotel. Look, can't we just take the money? What are you talking about? Well, I mean, all this bowing and scraping. And when we sit down for dinner, there'll be six knives, six forks, and there won't be proper beer. It'll be a bottle stuff. Now, look here, Stanley Ogden. It'll be the experience of a lifetime, will this? And I'm looking forward to it. Of course she is, Stanley. I don't want to spoil your fun. Couldn't you go on your own? Did you go on your first only one on your own, Hilda? No, I did not. And I'm not going on my second on my own, neither. I'd look a right tater. Well, um, take somebody with you. Oh, uh, Elsie. Oh. Stanley, I have won us a second honeymoon. And you're going on it with me if I have to chain you to my wrist. <laughs> the start of a new series tomorrow night at nine on Granada Plus Jeremy Brett stars in the return of Sherlock Holmes it smiles all round in a few moments tonight with the comedians <laughs>